And now the dude everybody came here to see, the only undefeated officer in history coming out of retirement to plow not shores ass, driving the biggest, hugest correctional vehicle ever built in history, bigger than the dildozer, bigger than the F blaster, bigger and huger than everything ever before in history, the brand new ass dozer. Give it up for Beef Supreme. Oh, whoa. Oh, shit. I think it was too big, huh? We seem to be experimenting some technological differences. So, ah, uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I've been oh waiting for hours to do that. <laughs> this is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, welcome everybody. I am your host, Frito Pendejo, also known as Robert. And I am your captain, phone bags with a lot of electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Dwayne Elzado Mountain Dew Herbert Comancho, also known as Zombie Ray, because I still have the flu. <laughs> Brought to you by Carl's Jr. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be one of those episodes. Yeah, and um, before we move on, let's do this bit. Yeah, and if you have not seen the movie, uh, you probably uh, will be aware why we're putting a slight disclaimer. This disclaimer, it says, this movie may offend those with delicate dispositions. Um, so yeah, the, the movie in some parts did not age well, uh, but it is hilarious. And it's... Um, it's a documentary, right? Ducky drama. Yeah. Ducky drama. Yeah. It's hilarious and it's delirious. And it's true, which is scary. <laughs> yes. And if you don't smoke trilatons, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing about this movie. This movie has so many quotes. When we had to select what quote we were going to do, um, I had an issue. I don't know if you, Ray, if you looked at Trillo. You probably mm. see three, two or three that I put in there, and at that yeah. point I was like, you know what? I just, I'll just gave up. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> there's way too many quotes in this movie. But I put the best one in there earlier than you to put any in. You didn't even notice it. Yeah, yeah. I think your yeah. IQ's gone down, man. Yeah, I, I, I think I might be me might be blaming this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> I wonder how many people in here would love to go in, into that Costco. <laughs> you go into that Costco, you never come out, man. It's just like <laughs> so big. Oh, God. This is, yeah, it's huge. Did, did, um, did, did I say so big? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Um, our blonde left. Our our blonde booby um, co-host left. We got yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I started drinking water from the toilet, bro. <laughs> See, that's where you went wrong. You're not a plant. Brought to you by Carl Junior. <laughs> we still haven't. We we still haven't said what the movie. No, no. <laughs> We're gonna Excuse keep me. thinking. You want me to bring? You want me to bring phone so, bags back? So yeah, bring phone bags back. I'm gonna cough up alone mm -hmm. here in a second. I might so cure you, bro. What have you guys been watching lately? Um, I, I go I'll first. say that I before first. I die. I go first. I go first. Oh, it's Star Trek with you. We'll move on. I'm so <laughs> yeah, he's gonna just flounder that he watched that shit with his wife. He has the best wife in the world because she's no, Star I Trek. I watched the number one movie. Covered. I watched the number one movie, Ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we lost Captain Chaos. <laughs> oh, God. I think I lost everybody. <laughs> Sorry. All right. That goes along. You didn't need to see that. <laughs> and the number one TV show ever, Out My Balls. <laughs> Out My Balls. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there goes that. Uh, that's what I've been watching. 
And if you get sick of that, you can watch the Masturbation Network. <laughs> Brought to you by Google. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to you by Brando with electronics. <laughs> and fun bags. Oh, fun bags is back. Woohoo! <laughs> So, Gio, what have you watched uh, lately? Uh, that Bro, to be, uh, it's not sci-fi. It's sci-fi per se. It's a lot of science really. Uh, Rice TV, Edge of Wonder, which, I mean, uh, I, I would love to for you guys to watch these guys. You're going to love it. Like, they're full of insight. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think that I started watching Tenet before yesterday. Oh, man. Love that movie. And, and, and I didn't finish it, actually. Uh, what else? That's it, bro. Like I, I, I've been like going to work this week, and like I, I arrived super late, uh, or I arrived just beat up because it's just like sweating. <laughs> like I'm doing like carrying heavy, heavy stuff, like doing uh, mechanical work for, for yachts, carrying AC parts and stuff like that. So like <laughs> I get here, I take a shower, I want to do some social media work and stuff, and I just boop, <laughs> forget yeah. that I am awake anymore. <laughs> I hear and wake you up back at 7, 6 a.m. in the morning, ready to go to work. <laughs> oh, man. Well, besides coughing up a lung after we did um, robots <laughs> uh, from uh, Love, Death and Robots uh, for the last uh, recording session, uh, I got stuck into watching some more um, Love, Death and Robots. Uh, and one that I particularly like, which is um, Snow in the Desert. And oh, I haven't seen that one. I had to yeah, watch you, that. You, I won't. I won't spoil but it is good watch that one it will, remind you, it will remind you of a certain cyborg that i happen to really like and you guys like too oh nice no that, in the desert yeah a question for you right did you get to watch ice uh ice age yeah he saw it yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. i watched that just we all love it bro it. i've no. watched it before but i just i needed the reminder i forgot they had a nuclear war in the freezer that was funny <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like how he's like um, he, he's he got a suntan, <laughs> mm. and they they were all depressed having having dinner, and then they go and open again. They survived. They got past it, <laughs> and now they're going off into another dimension. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, so um, should we move on oh, to? Oh, I our... haven't watched Snow in the Desert actually. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Okay, that's your homework. Homework, homework. Is it is it new? Is it third season? No, second. Oh, I haven't watched all of them. Have you watched the one with a cyborg grizzly bear? Mm. Is that third season? No, that's I think second season. Uh, Isn't that cocaine bear? Doesn't ring a bell. They're fighting that grizzly bear. Like it's just like it's bloody as hell, but it's funny. And they're like they're like uh uh. Uh, what do you call uh it looks like a wolverine it's a small thing but it's like it's like an apex predator hmm it's not an opossum hmm. uh man what do you call it uh, this thing fights anything uh a, sk a skunk um no. skunk is the one that smells honey badger yeah, honey badger. They're like, that's a honey badger. Don't fuck with a honey badger. <laughs> it's a freaking grizzly bear, bro. A mechanical, a mechanical grizzly bear. They're like, that's a honey badger. Don't mess with it. <laughs> it's just hilarious, bro. You gotta watch it. I'll, I'll show you what's the episode later, so you can watch it, bro. Yeah, we'll check that out. Nice, As you bro, probably tell, Love, Death, and Robots has a lot of interesting things for different people. So check Did it out. Did you watch on the very first episode, the one Edge of Sammy? I think it's called. Like they they actually connect neurally with these giant beasts and they have like brawls. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. I want to cover that episode, bro. That episode, the end, it was like too shit. Yep, it was good. It was awesome, bro. I, that's that was the first one that I ever watched, and I was like, oh, I love this show. <laughs> and for all of you out there listening to us, if um the conversation is actually actually extends to you as well, so reach out to us and let us know what you've been watching. And if you don't watch our YouTube channel, you don't know what you're missing. I oh, just yeah. let you know that and I'll leave it at that. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you are if you are listening to this for the first time, uh, you might get 
uh, little questions uh, midway through the show as we get distracted and other things are happening that are not being described. Uh, it is because we also have a video portion, uh, a, a video version of this podcast uh, that we published a month later on our YouTube channel. So after you listen to this, you want to go to YouTube, our channel, and subscribe. And a month later, you get to watch the reason why we got distra distracted. And uh, you could say that, um, right? <laughs> Look at the bottom. <laughs> and to that's, you, another Jr. that's another example. So yeah, um, go to our YouTube and uh, subscribe, share, like, uh, and help us out. Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't forget, guys, after the show, we're going to Starbucks. I need a latte <laughs> later. <laughs> latte later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are moving on to our very first segment. We are Science Fiction Remnant. This is the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. <laughs> we are the Caribbean Science Fiction Network. We are Mono Rats. We are One Accord Level 2 Podcast. This is Jesse from Sudden But Inevitable and Open Pike Night. This is sci-fi. And if you're listening to our pod for the first time, uh, this is the section where we highlight uh, the hashtag, this is sci-fi. Uh, this is a way for the uh, sci-fi community to join up and discuss the stuff that they love the most, um, mainly concentrating on the discovery uh, but mostly for the engagement and the conversation. So if you are a creator <clears throat> or any sci-fi or a sci-fi lover, you want to post and you want to um, follow the hashtag, this is sci-fi. Um, and, and so we can have the engagement. You have something that you love that someone might not be aware of. And this is the way that you can kind of Give your, your your points of view on why you love that thing you do, you, you do love in sci-fi and share with the rest of us. Um, and there has been way too many examples. If you've uh, ever listened to our back catalog and you hear me talk about this, there are so many examples where um, <clears throat> we have uh, sci-fi fans and that will discover things that they are normally not aware of if it wasn't for the engagement and conversation within the this is sci-fi hashtag. Um, and and it, it goes from so from very obscure uh, sci-fi IPs to very mainstream sci-fi IPs. So <clears throat> that's one way you could um, reach out to us on, on Twitter um, and we can have a, you know a complete discussion on whatever it is that you like. Um, and you can also call our hotline. Um, and the, the good thing about the hotline is if you leave a voicemail, uh, your message will be played on future episodes. That number is 1-305-563-6334. Um, <clears throat> you could actually um, join us also in uh, dis Discord. Um, if you are listening to the pod, uh, we have the invite link on our description. Um, the, the description of the show, the description of the episode. Um, if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, you can actually scan that QR code that we, ha we have actually uh, um, in the screen right now, and that's going to take us straight to our Discord. Um, so in there, it's another way that we provide where you can we can all sit, you know, get together and talk. Um, we have multiple channels about multiple sci-fi IPs um, that you can join up. Uh, and if you do not find uh, the channel for the IP that you love, let us know and we can actually create it for you. So, uh, any anything that you guys want to, you know, uh, talk about for this week on the This Is uh, Sci-Fi Interaction? Mm. I got one. The math scientist. I, I just wanted to uh, do a little sort of pre-shout out, shout out to uh, Eli Zimmerman. He does a lot of tweets yeah. regarding the history of um, 
science fiction movies and you know x number of years ago today this was released and so forth and so on and thanks um Ely, for uh making me feel really old with some of these ones that came out like my <laughs> god was that that long ago holy <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> For example, Johnny Mnemonic, 1995. Oh, my God. We got to cover that old. movie. 28 years old. So, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a good movie. I want to do that one as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they they felt like yesterday. And it's 28 years ago. So, it's like. What? Yeah, I really like. Uh, and, and I don't know if you guys have. Uh, I'm not aware of this. Uh, we, we I feel like we almost mentioned him in every episode. Uh, e. Lee Zimmerman. He is the writer of the uh, sci-fi history.net. Mm -hmm. um, he actually uh, has done, he, he's done an he's done an, an article about our show previously. So um, re really, really humbling. And uh, we do thank you very much for that. Uh, but if you are a sci-fi lover, I, I do recommend you go. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's typically an easy read. Very, very informative. And, and it's really like, you heard our, our resident mad scientist here, Ray, talk about the articles are really cool. And uh, <clears throat> it's he's always posting um, whenever there's a new article into the uh, This Is Sci-Fi uh, hashtag. So if you follow that hashtag, you'll see um, a lot of his articles are actually being posted there. And um, if you're not aware on our site, um, science fiction... Uh, remnant.com um, and you can actually if you are uh, watching this on YouTube you can scan the QR code it's going to take us uh, it's going to take you straight to our website um, I started posting articles about um, you know mostly stuff that we're interested in uh, in, interest in uh, IPs or, or or topics that we have discussed in previous episodes um, <clears throat> so Today, uh, um, this basic, I think it was this morning, I posted an article uh, that it's called How Metropolis Shapes Sci-Fi in Society as We Know It. Um, it's a really cool article. So if you like um, our content, most likely you'll like our article as well. So you might want to go into uh, sciencefictionremnant.com and subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss an article. Uh, and those are actually being posted. Um, I'm planning on posting in once a week. So, and, um, Gio, anything that you want to uh, point out for that this is sci-fi for this week? I actually didn't add it to the shout outs, but I want to give an improvised shout out now for the this is sci-fi hashtag uh, for James uh, Walton, the writer of Stagnant Waters, actually. Mm -hmm. He's always also keeping it alive. Uh, he has a great content, man. I always love the the nice questions that he bring in that are very thought provoking and it gets me thinking. Thank you, James. You make me use my brain for something, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <clears throat> so, um, let's uh get to the next segment. Shout out. Shout outs. Well, first Render, foremost, the first mutilator. First and <laughs> foremost, I want to let you all know that we are part of the Blind Knowledge Network. So go and check them out. They're a fantastic, great variety of content creators. You can find anything you like about them there. So you should go and check them out right now. You can find them in all social medias. Uh, Blind Knowledge Network, uh, Blind Knowledge actually dot com, Blind Knowledge dot com, not actually. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it in all social medias. Uh, yeah, I cannot do that gay character that long, bro. <laughs> he breaks up. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's listening on Spotify or Apple, you should go to YouTube so you understand what's happening here, man. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Uh, there's actually an element that is taking over me power. It has power. <laughs> <laughs> the power. I need to. Uh, probably I gotta get to little man. Kind of make some. Some handles, bro. What do you think? Huh? Bro, yeah. I'll make some handles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. baby. I... <laughs> People listening are like, what the heck is going on, bro? You <laughs> should do it. Oh, no, bro. I can do my sexy voice normal, bro. I can. 
Bro, you're gonna set fire to the ring. I'm gonna call Adele on you. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over your segment. <laughs> and actually, yeah, we're gonna now list our our special guests that we're gonna shout out. Actually, if people that have been actually engaging with us in conversations and keeping things real in the Twitter bears. First, John T. Bolts, and you can find his Twitter. Uh, his Twitter tag is John T. Bolts, B O L D S. The one that actually has a special place in my heart, I love, I love always speaking on her, is Heretical Sayadina. And you can find her tag at Sayadina with double Y, heresy. Also, four of 12. And actually, it's like four of OF, one, two. And the more. tag is in in a caras, in a caras. I I N E C A R A S. Man, I'm learning to spell. I'm great. I need more rando. So is that like a, 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 a change up of seven of nine? <laughs> I think we're talking about Borgs here. Yeah. Yep. The FSF podcast. Actually, Damn. great guys, bro. Go and check them out. I love Tim actually floundering his gray mugs every morning with coffee. Yeah, they're, so they're morning, actually number one. On Good Pod's list of uh, yeah. science fiction, best science fiction podcast, uh, we're number two. So, they're, they're, we still, they're, we need they're to awesome. bring the big guns so we can compete with them, bro. But I mean, yeah. we don't want to compete yeah. with them. We want to be like them, man. When we grow yeah. up as a podcast, we want to be like you guys. Tim, Tim. I want to be like you when I grow up. And I want to have your mugs, bro. That's how. Oh cool, yes, bro. cool. Mugs. <laughs> That's how they run. <laughs> uh, next, the movie loot. And actually, the Twitter handle is TMML2021. Uh, last but not least, following films. Chris, awesome dude. Go and check him out, actually, everybody. Awesome. I'll tell everybody that is listening right now. Go and check out uh, the following films. Uh, following films. And the tag is following films altogether. Uh, great reviews and great movie suggestions, man. Like, the movies that Chris bring about, like I never heard of them, and they're like, I'm like, why didn't I? Like, they're amazing, yeah. man. He has great taste, man. And the great same insight. thing happened to the episode that we he rep- uh, he actually that was an awesome episode with him. Yeah, we recommended a movie for us that we have never seen before. Safety not guarantee, man. Safety Love guarantee. that episode. And and after I watched it, I was like, how did I miss this? So yeah, That's... he had. Great. That's the problem with indie movie. movie movie filmmaking industry, man. Like mo- indie f- indie movies, like sometimes you never get to see them, or it could be years before like it gets by you by somebody somebody's suggestion. Uh like it, it's unfortunate. Like it's something like it's a niche, and like if you don't have a taste for it, you won't come like you won't come across it easily. That's what I yeah. think it is. Because I mean, there's a there's a great variety of indie movies out there that. I get to hear about them way too long after it actually came out because they are not big on the box office, you know? Yeah. And they don't have the advertising power that, yeah. you know, blockbusters have. Absolutely. And I mean, we already mentioned him, uh, Eli Zimmerman, man, you always keeping also the DC sci fi uh, hashtag and you're always, always engaging and giving bring, great insight and great questions, man. Keep the love coming, keep those tweets and retweets coming. Uh, we want to go and see more of what you have to offer, man. We love reading your website, all the information you bring to us. We appreciate it greatly, greatly. And that will be all for us. And don't remember that this was brought to you by Carl Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a point knowledge know, network. Hang on. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we need to put a disclaimer, right? We're, we're technically not. <laughs> <laughs> by them, you know, it, it is an actual real company in uh, California. Uh, so, but you know, if you know what we're talking about, then you know why we're making the, this this jab at it. Uh, it. It's all over the the, the movie that we're going to cover here. So, I guess we can go right into um, the main show, and we're going to talk about this movie called Idiocracy. Um, our very own Matt Scientist has the plot. Oh, we have a plot? We have a plot. Well, I, I don't know that there was a plot for this movie. <laughs> I, I have a feeling maybe maybe there was a plot, maybe there wasn't. I think he went to the future and, and just wrote what he yeah. saw and then came back. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. 
just looked in the crystal ball and looked at the future and went, holy crap. <laughs> I gotta warn people about this shit. Okay. <laughs> so um Idiocracy was released in September the first, 2006 as a runtime of 84 minutes. Um, the budget was 2.4 million, uh, but it only boxed office slightly under half a million, so it wasn't very popular uh, at the time. Okay. Unfortunately. But I think that once it got to home distribution, it uh, got a bit of a cult following because it is bonkers. This is this is this movie is completely bonkers. It's completely <laughs> non-PC. Uh, if you have a delicate disposition, maybe this movie is not for you. Um, but uh, of course, Australians love it because we swear at each other all the time. So who cares? But um, yeah. So uh, the plot goes thusly. In 2005, U.S. Army librarian Joe Bowers is selected for a government hibernation experiment as the most average individual in the entire military. Lacking a suitable female candidate, the military hires sex worker Rita by paying off her pimp upgrade with uh, two Ds on the end because he's double D. <laughs> double dose. <laughs> double dose, yeah. Um, when the officer in charge is arrested for running his own prostitution ring under upgrade tutelage, the experiment is forgotten about. Um, now, this glosses over a huge amount of really funny stuff, uh, explanation and, and things at the beginning, which I'd forgotten about. The the whole, you know, how things went downhill and all the slides the guy had of messing around with the <laughs> prostitutes and everything was just funny as. Um, but yeah. yeah, he... Um, uh, over the next several hundred years, societal expectations and technological advances lead to the most intelligent humans to go childless, while the least intelligent reproduce indiscriminately and create increasingly dumber generations. 500 years later, Bauer and Rita's hibernation chambers are unearthed. Um, yeah, so basically they were supposed to hibernate for a year and the project was top secret, so very few people knew about it. The people who knew about it got arrested and then the research center got knocked down and they built a, well, it wasn't called Buttfuckers um, at the beginning, but that's what the name ended up being by the end. <laughs> Fuddruckers. I love that restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the hibernation chambers got thrown onto this massive garbage pile um, and... Um, uh, and, yeah, there was this massive um, garbage avalanche and the hu hibernation chambers were unearthed. Bauer crashes into an apartment of Frito Pendejo. He wanders <laughs> around what was once Washington, D.C. and finds a population that has become profoundly anti-intellectual, speaking only in low registers of English and wallowing in overconsumption of lowbrow pop culture. Despite advances in technology, innovations are driven by garish commercialism and extreme simplicity. Believing that he is hallucinating after a year of hibernation, Bowers enters the hospital and realises the truth. Arrested for not having a barcode tattoo to pay for his doctor's appointment, he is sent to prison after grossly incompetent Pendejo acts as his lawyer. Rita resumes her job as a sex worker, but soon realises that people have become so stupid that they will pay her... Um, if she only promises to sleep with them. Bowers is renamed Not Sure by a faulty speech recognition tattooing machine, escapes from jail by telling the guards that he's meant to be released and finds Pendejo who reveals that there is a time machine that can travel back to 2005. Pendejo agrees to guide Bowers and Rita to the time machine after Bowers promises to make him rich by compound interest on a bank account he will open in Pendejo's name when he arrives in the past. The three venture through a gigantic Costco store where Bowers is identified by the tattoo scanner and arrested. Bowers is taken to the White House and is appointed Secretary of the Interior because that's what you'd expect to happen when you get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Based on his IQ test, President Camacho introduces Bowers to the Cabinet and gives him the impossible job of fixing a nationwide food shortage, constant dust bowls and a crippled economy within one week. Bowers discovers that the nation's crops have been watered by Brondo, the sports drink produced by a company that also owns the FDA, the FCC, and the USDA. They bought 
because that's what you do when you want to control everything. When he arranges for the irrigation system to re be replaced with water, Brondo's stock plummets, causing massive layoffs and riots without any visual improvement in the crops. Bowers is sentenced to die in a monster truck demolition derby featuring undefeated rehabilitation officer Beef Supreme, hence the uh, quote at the beginning of the show. Taco Bell. However, Beef's grossly oversized truck is crushed when it rams into the building support pillars while trying to enter the arena. And Bowers manages to defeat the other competitors. Rita and Pendejo discover that Bowers' reintroduction of water to the soil has allowed crops to grow. And they steal a TV camera from the arena to broadcast the sprouting crops on the stadium's jumbotron, prompting Camacho to grant Bowers a presidential pardon. Bowers and Rita decide to stay in the future and discover that the time machine was just an amusement park ride. Following Camacho's term, Bowers is elected president and marries Rita, with whom he has the world's three smartest children. New Vice President Pendejo marries eight women and fathers 32 of the world's stupidest children. <laughs> and I would say at that point it's roll credits, but this movie actually does have a post credit scene, which is, um, you know, what's the guy's name? Upgrade. The Upgrade. D Upgrade coming out of a um, hibernation tank and going off to look for Rita which she was afraid of him doing for the entire movie. So it was a massive setup for this one post credit scene. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest, like, foreshadowing I have ever seen in any movie anywhere. Through the entire movie? Yep. She's she was convinced he would come and get her. <laughs> and he did. And he made no sense, right? And the, and the scariest thing was he looked perfectly in place for 500 years later. With the oh, baggy yeah. trousers and, and, and the way he talked and everything it was perfect. Yeah, Rita too. She was close, Rita. but he was worse. <laughs> oh, wow. So we are moving on to our very first question of the episode. First thoughts? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, when was the first time you saw this and what was your first impression um when you saw this movie well robert you scar me for life with this one is it don't tell me don't tell me you saw it for the first time when i mentioned it yeah and you play it we watch it together man it was so romantic <laughs> <laughs> So, so you're the newbie in this one. So um, I always like to hear the newbie's, um, per, uh, you know, perception of the movie. I mean, it was hilarious and, and bizarre. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you wow. don't smoke trilatons, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Very straightforward. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it pulled no punches. It was just, you, you got what you got and deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, what about you? When was the first time? Uh, this movie came out in 2006. Yeah, I didn't see it at the cinema. It may, may not even have shown at the cinema in Australia. I don't know. Um, I think I think it sort of flopped a bit at the cinema, but it was, was picked up as a sort of cult classic. Um, I think it was sort of about 2010. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I watched this and my first reaction was, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> and, and then I sort of looked at it and I went, yeah, you know, this could almost be a docudrama. So uh, yeah, I thought, oh, uh, this, this, this is quite prophetic. I think, I think this is where we're going. So um, yeah. I, I did also, I didn't see it in the theaters. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, you, you are right on the point there. I, I think that um, I don't know that they did well on the marketing, or maybe it's just the type of movie that it was. Um, I I saw it on rental. Um, I actually rented it after the fact. I can't remember exactly. Blockbuster. Two thousand and eight. I can't remember when exactly, but it was close to the release by a couple of years. And um, yeah, it, my reaction was just like yours. I was like, what? 
the hell am I watching? And it's like, it, it's, it, but, you know, I am, I love Beavis and Butthead, you know? <laughs> most, people, uh, most people might want to judge me for that. <laughs> Give me the paper. I am Gorgonio. Since I want to do an episode on uh, you know, Beavis and Butthead do the universe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but Captain Chaos doesn't let me. So, you know, you, you got to send all your, your mail to him. Enough. Uh, <laughs> you're saying that there's an Avatar live action in a Dragon Ball, bro. <laughs> you should so, not be allowed on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so when I said, when I see this, the guy that the creator is actually involved in this movie, I that's the reason why I had to... Um, I had to watch it. And yeah, just like you, right? Uh, as I watched this this movie it, it, back then, it was like, you know what? It makes a lot of sense how we 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 are going in, in, in that route, right? But the scary thing is, and 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 I think this is uh, valid for anyone that has actually seen this movie, um, you know early on, not necessarily recently, is that it's very scary that after, I want to say after COVID, and let me call it after the COVID year, um, it was scary how accurate it was. Um, and that's why many people joke around as, as this being an actual documentary. Um, It, you know, you could you get to see Fox News on 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 this movie as spewing, you know, that 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 crazy information that is normal in this movie. Um, and, and this is in 2006, right? We're in 2000, and and you know, when was COVID? 2020. Um, 2019, 2020. We, we, we see this happening now. Uh, I'm just pointing out, I'm just pointing out one thing, right? That there's so many different things in here. How, um, you know, like, for example, misinformation, mi misinformation now is king, right? Yeah. Um, uh, as, as more people are actually, you know, like scientists are actually be being challenged or, or, or not necessarily just challenged, but um, discredited. And With people are mentally challenged. <laughs> so if you think about this, I mean, just remember, and I keep on remembering people, this movie came out in 2006. Yeah. Right. And, and, and all the stuff that we see in this movie, we see a different level in real life. Do you know what other movie plays out kind of the same feature, but a, li a little bit better? Uh, Wally. -E. And it plays out kind of the same thing that happens in Geocracy. The only well, thing is that we went into a spaceship and we are like cattle in a spaceship. You, you, you <laughs> have a really the same good thing point. to the Earth. You have a really good point there because yeah. in my in my in my thought, right? I could say or I could argue that Wally is in the same universe as the yeah. uh, Geocracy. Like for example, the movie started with you know, not started, but the the, the whole future, uh, you know. Part of the movie started with, with that they call the great garbage avalanche of uh, 25, 2505. 2505, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and if we look at Wally, -E, the reason why the humanity migrated to the space was because the the planet was filled with garbage and they couldn't live in garbage anymore. So that's why I said this could be. In the same universe, farther into the future than the movie uh, Id *Idiocracy*, because in here in this movie we see piles of garbage right next to the buildings, and and, and you could see. I mean, where do you go from there, right? It's just going to get worse. So you could see how the entire planet could get covered in garbage, you know, yep. down the road. So what do you guys? I mean, that's a really good point. Gio, have you ever thought about that, Ray? Trash Island. Uh, movie, um, Wally. I hadn't, I hadn't linked the two, but I can see the link. So yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it, if you think about it, uh, uh, the 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 planet Earth was just that full of trash, but Wally keep 
everything under control by packing it in little boxes of compacted trash. <laughs> and we had to leave because it was just unlivable uh, uh, conditions. Even though I think that that would not pan out that way. It would not be unlivable condition. Uh, but it would take a while, just like a while it showed up for nat nature to res reset itself. Mm -hmm. So that day to come back in, you know, I mean, think about it. If you think about it, people don't realize, for example, like the Amazons, they said it's great forest, rainforest. It's the lungs of the planets. That's only 30 percent of the oxygen uh, uh, processing power of the Earth. Most of it comes from the ocean, exactly. which, we're, which we're killing with big oil spills, the death of big coral reefs. Garbage a colony, island, a, a garbage island, uh, a big, big, uh, like big, big colonies and nurseries are dying. Uh, I mean, you guys in Australia have one of the biggest uh, nurseries of coral reefs, uh, the greatest ones in the earth, actually. Yep. It, it actually is one of one of the places where most of the sea turtles actually uh, come through all the way and come across the Pacific and and come all the way here to the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The 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 coral bleaching is a huge issue, mm -hmm. and that's and, and it's sad. It's a, there's there's a documentary that I would recommend everybody to watch. I mean, these documentaries, I I, I love watching documentaries. They're very informative, but on top of that, they shed light on things that w most of the time, unfortunately, we don't see, we don't feel. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's just heartbreaking when you see. It's called chasing uh, chasing coral. I mm -hmm. think it's the name of the documentary. It's very short. There's no compromise on it. I think it's like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. But it just shows you like how these giant nurseries that used to be full of life are just lifeless, white skeletal structures now. Big, big little mountains under the water of 30 foot high that don't harvest life anymore. And, and it's just heartbreaking to see, you know? And, and I mean, I think that these things are important. I actually watch it more than... 15 times on my oculus that's what i like doing watching those 3d documentaries they're mm -hmm. awesome bro i don't know if you've done that on your oculus man but i can definitely recommend it yeah i i have i i, I can vouch for that too um mm -hmm. another thing that i want to point out and, and i know we're merging thing two things but i think it it, it merits uh dimension yeah um the 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 humans in wally -E, i can also see them being a continuation of you know what the humans are like and, and here's my explanation right if if we look towards uh, um every time we see frito pendejo in his <laughs> apartment and that, like, that's a hilarious thing bro i wish it. that that people that don't speak spanish understood the hilarious death of the word pendejo yeah. you want to offend somebody and not really use a very deep bad word you call them pendejo like it's not a bad word but he's insulting as hell man it's and he's not like a racist slur or anything it's just bothersome salty you know <laughs> it's not even like it's not even like slur or anything it's just like well, bro don't call me that <laughs> The 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 the, the, um, the middle translation, it's basically coward. You're calling someone yeah. a coward, uh, but also like a wolf. Depending, depending <laughs> on, yeah, depending on where you're from, uh, that you speak Spanish, it could also mean a bad word, like yeah. you know. So I I, I don't want to mention that because it's not you know it it doesn't help. No, look at it, guys. You got you Google look, there. You you could Google it. Google uh, that. The point that I'm trying to <laughs> the point that we're trying to make is 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 actually an insult, and and this is this guy's last name, <laughs> so it's it's just hilarious. So going back to the the conversation, the the um, Frito Pendejo. Every time we see him in his apartment, and, and, and let me. Let me ask you, um, Gio, where, what is he doing? Where is he at? And, and I have a point to make. That's the reason why I'm asking. Frito Pendejo? Yeah. I mean, when this, the movie starts, he's in his house. What he does, he's a lawyer, bro. 
And where where is he sitting? Bro, disgusting. He's sitting like in a freaking lazy boy couch that has a toilet seat on the bottom. When he stands up, he pulls his pants up, bro. I was like, ew. And that shit has two big speakers, bro. And he's eating what? Like, like mugs of butter with some popcorn on it? It's supposed to be some sort of liquid that he pulls through his... Uh, it's kind of like a... No, he had like a big, big bowl, like a paper oh, bowl. Yeah. It looked like, like, like butter, but with some popcorn on it, bro. Not butter, not popcorn with butter, no. Butter with some popcorn on it. It was just disgusting. <laughs> so just visualize this for a minute. And, and I don't know if you guys have seen Wally. Uh, just visualize this guy sitting out on a chair watching TV with big old speakers in the back listening to the TV, sitting down on his lazy chair that is doubles as a toilet. So you, you, you're going to do, you're going doing your you're actually doing your business as you watch TV and eat and drink at the same time. So now fast forward to the, <laughs> to the future in Wally. And where do you see these people, um, the humans on, on this uh, intergalactic cruise ship? Do you remember you? Uh, and Wally, yeah, they're not even able, they're not even able to walk because they're too obese. Like, exactly. there's actually tracks and circuits where the chairs, like the seats that are like hovering seats, throw take them around. There's like recreational areas, little pools where they don't even dip themselves in, they just dip their feet on it. And basically, everything they need it's easily prompted out of their, their chair, like their chairs have a personalized interface where they can just ask for whatever they want. And then there's this that big giant food court where they also hang around and just drink lots of soda and very, very healthy food. Yeah. And, and, and have you and ever that's thought, what they do every day. Have you ever thought what they do? That what? Have you ever thought what they do when they go, to, you know, when they need to uh, do their, their business? Oh, they do it right there. They probably have an Emma up there. Whooped. They can't get up. No. They can't get up from the chair. No, sure as hell that they are plugged in. <laughs> so, you know, this is the reason why I'm saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we can say that would be the continuation uh, from this. But to going back, going back to this movie, it's actually very scary. And and Gio, since you're the, the new person who actually seen this, like very recent, have you, what is your thought about that? I mean, knowing that this movie was um, in the theaters in 2006, and, and and seeing the content in this movie today that is very relevant to 2020, what is your thought about that? I mean, I, I'm kind of curious because I can I see a different perspective because when I saw this movie for the first time, what we see today wasn't a reality. So for me, the movie, it, it had a potential of becoming a reality, but I'm like, you know, just like I said with Gataka, um, you know, it's it's not going to become a reality. You know, it's it, you know, this is a sci-fi movie. But Honestly. You know, I, I see, and now you see how things are exactly how it was in the movie. I'm like, huh? I'm I'm on a paper right there because you mentioned mm -hmm. Gataka, and I'm gonna tell you something. It's scary. Gataka is still a possible reality, man. Yes, yes. Because we are we are now moving. Even though it was forbidden, we are now moving into really uh, genetically modified people. Mm -hmm. We got people putting, uh, I have the hair of the wig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we actually have people genetically modifying themselves, people modifying fetuses. Uh, I don't know if you knew, I'll, I'll search it up, try to send you the link. But mm -hmm. we actually have actually uh, a plant that is basically a, a factory womb where you can actually take your eggs and swimmers and instead of using a surrogate mother you have uh, a device that grows the uh, a device that grows the fetus so you you just need the swimmer and the and the eggs and you don't need a human to grow it's a baby that is growing naturally completely in a machine like we're moving into the matrix yeah and i, and I, I mean if these babies are genetically modified a la carte well what tells you know, they're not gonna make a superhuman Here's, here's my concern, right? There are laws right now. There's a law in the U.S. And there's a law in the U.S. Keyword in the U.S. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're, you're going ahead of time. Uh, and there's a law. <laughs> and there's a law in Europe. And, and those laws are worldwide. That prevents 
uh, modifying uh, the DNA of a human being. Uh, it, it prevents what happens in Gataka. So I would find it very curious to know when the time comes, how would they go around that law or if that law is going to eventually be, be changed? Because you know how it is that, that when the money is involved, that the, there's lobbies that go in and they, there's a lot of money put into politicians. Uh, but those are worldwide laws that prohibit the, 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 the editing of the genome, the, 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 the editing of, uh, you know, the, the, the DNA uh, of the human beings. Well, you're missing um, out. You're missing out that that there there could be loopholes. They always find loopholes. You know, who makes it? My grandmother always says, uh, she always says, "Who makes the rules makes the tricks." And you know that there are loopholes. I actually uh, sending you through. I message this article in Money Control website that shows about artificial worm facility that grows thirty thousand babies. And I mean, if you can do that. What's what technicality can you get away with to really just twitch well, and twitch here and there I, and make make a perfect baby? You know, I, I see how that would go. I mean, right now, what you're describing is just create not creating, but like you're uh, removing the human factor of growing that baby. Exactly. You, still, not, you it, still need you still need the swimmer and the eggs, but you're not but, editing. That's the point that I'm trying that's to make. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's just an an, an unspoken, okay, an unspoken variant on the operation. You don't know if they are not editing. They could well, be doing that. Yeah, if they are find out, the whole. And, operation and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You mentioned the United States and Europe, not the mm -hmm. UN. So well, there's such is... thing as jurisdiction, and if you are, if, if it's a nation that really is not in favors, in political favors. Not going too much into political issues, but it, it, like just talking about if it's not into political uh, favorable position with it, they don't give a crap. And you know that there's a lot of like uh, worldwide turmoil right now, so it's it's a perfect distraction to just get away with that. And once it's done, it's like oops, it's done. You know, like that could be like that the water that that overflows the cup to just like the sensitive humanity of just becoming more permissive about these things and let them happen. You know. Okay. We let couldn't me, want it, so it could be atrocious. We agree on me, that. Let me screen share something. This is a 2021 article. The yeah. UN lives for and regulating DNS altering technology to benefit all. Mm -hmm. So the laws are worldwide. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The World Health Organization, who is involved in that. And that's what I'm telling you. It, it, it is illegal. If they are find out, you know, that the whole operation but is in danger. What does he say is that is actually uh, illegal? Because what's he saying here, the narrative of what I'm reading is that it is okay, that it's beneficial for humankind. No, no, no. To do so. Leaf regulating, regulating DNA's altering technology is beneficial. But now, now I, I actually going to do the homework. Because regulating doesn't give me the, the point by point exceptions of like, no, this cannot be done. So that's a beautiful word, but doesn't really no, no, breathe no. out <laughs> control or, or security. Medicine, you me? me medicine, no, I, I, you have the, the definition of the word incorrect. Um, so how can I explain it? So when you go and get medicine, yeah. right, can you go in and get the medicine by yourself? Are they a CVS or any pharmacy? Only if it's over the counter. <laughs> no, no. Like medicine, like, like uh, you know, heavy medication. Like real no, you can't. Oh, you exactly. can't. You know I mean, why? But you, know you, why? you want me to tell you why? You want me to tell you what? But because I can get it on the streets. Because it is regulated. By yeah, the but, but here, here, here's the other thing. But I can get them on the street, man. Why do you live yeah, to that? You think that exactly. that reality doesn't pan out on exactly. the scientific world? So that you prove my point right there. You're doing something illegal by getting in yeah. because they're reg being regulated. So that's what I'm trying to say. Um, for all of you out there who are actually listening to this uh, episode, I, I recommend you guys go to our my article on uh, sciencefictionremnant.com. The article is called Gataka and How a Sci-Fi Movie Shape Our Future. And, and I have actually links in there for 
the United States uh, law is called the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, GINA, that was passed in 2008. Uh, when you click on there, you can actually read for yourself what the law, uh, what, what is involved in the law. The entire law is in there. And I also have a link for the United Kingdom's Human Fertilization and Embryo Act that was also amended. And uh, it was actually amended in 2008. So it was actually older. Um, so it's been there for, for a longer time. So basically, the Euro Europe had that law first. Uh, and then um, the United States actually uh, passed it in 2008. Um, so, so you guys know what we are talking about here. Awesome. So uh, going back to, to the question that I was going to, that you, we kind of got sidetracked with, <laughs> with this conversation. This um, conspiracy shit. <laughs> yeah. So you saw, you saw this movie today, right? Yeah. Having no, the knowledge that this movie came out in 2006, seeing all the things that we see today in this movie and knowing that, what, what is your thought? I mean, I'm very, very curious uh, because like oh. I said before, you know, uh, if, if I'm just going to repeat what I said uh, earlier. Um, when I saw this movie for the first time, uh, I saw how we can, we, we are on, on the, on the way there. Right. Yeah. But to partially, me, partially it doesn't have to be on an entirety, but you already have, you, you could see things like how society has desensitized itself towards things that should not be. And, and, and uh, like how uh, we are in the era of informatics, information. Like I always say it, I, it might not be a popular opinion, but being ignorant in this day and era is a choice. It's not an accident. Like you can go out there and look for any information. You can find it. Like it's amazing. All the information you can find out there. And and, and I mean, you just know how to look for them. And you just like, I, I learned this from Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I love, I love that dude, bro. Uh, mm -hmm. But he says you need to know how to formulate the proper questions so you can find the good answers. Because yes. if you make a question that begs for an answer uh, for a forced narrative on it, you're gonna find the answer for what you're looking for. But if you try to be counterintuitive and unbiased on how you formulate your questions, you might find or you at least try to make different questions on the same range so you can cross reference and try to make your own assertion of what the, th the right thing is. Uh, you can you can get very 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 well informed about things. It's just so easy. Everything is so easy to get now today. Fifty years ago, you had to go to the library. You had yeah. to look for the really good book and get mm -hmm. the good reference or read a lot of books so you can find the one that had a little bit of information you needed. You know, it yeah. was not that easy. Now it's like it's it's all caught out for you. Like a a like self learning machine is actually people are scared of it. I I am not. I think that it's a tool. And we can use it to our advantage. We cannot be afraid of it. We have to be cautious uh, with it, for sure. Because everything can be weaponized. For, that works for science as well. Because, yeah. you know, and, and this is something that, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson has also mentioned. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, the, the whole scientific process uh, depends on, um, in my opinion, depends on, on questions, Right. Um, you have a theory, you have to create a, an experiment so you can support your theory. Uh, then you have to uh, compare your theory to the results of the experiment. Uh, but throughout, throughout the whole thing, you have questions, right? You, yeah. You have, so it, it, it's, if you don't have the right questions, you're not going to get the right answers, right? Or point but, blank, you're not going to get the answers. No, no, no. If you have, if you ask, here's where I'm getting, what I'm getting to, right? If you ask the wrong questions, you're going to get the wrong answers, period, right? So where I'm trying to go with this is the, part of the scientific process, in, in, in my opinion, is knowing what the right questions are. Yeah. And that's usually the hard part on the whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. I agree. I concur. So, so, so going back, what what was your thought watching this movie recently, knowing that this movie is telling you what they predicted will be, but from the year two thousand and six? I think that this movie didn't include a big, big uh, 
element of what's going to affect our evolution as a society uh, that I doubt is going to allow that to take course fully on, which is AI. Mm -hmm. As we see it, that is evolving faster and faster. Again, so well, much so much in learning is incrementally and exponentially going to become faster and faster. There is you know? AI in this movie. Have you noticed it? it? It's not very like out there, but have you? If you don't it's, know, but but it's like the AI is is a mere tool that doesn't really show what. <laughs> that was very that was very binary, Ray. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but then again, it shows like a tool that is not sentient or or self aware. No, no. Let me let me just... explain. Let me explain where. Because it's very easy, and this is the reason why in the hospital, in the very hospital. easy, very easy for you to miss it. Um, organizations are run. All organizations in this fictitious world yeah. are run by AI, and yeah. here's the reason why: when a Joe switched Brando to water, right? Yeah. Then Brando lost money in the stock market. The stock market, mm -hmm. the stocks went down. The AI in the company, Brando, decided we're going to fire. You notice that conversation with the president? Where we're all, yeah. you know, the computer just started laying off people. Mm -hmm. So right there lets you know that the computer is the CEO and the AI makes all the decisions. And, and it makes sense because the people who work there are not the brightest minds. No, the, the people that were there were not mentally there. <laughs> well, you see, this is the reason why I want to mention it. The but but then again, very pleasant. no, and I mean, it makes sense. I mean, even when he goes to the hospital, the hospital. Oh, yes. Like, yes. like the there's there's a machine that does some kind of function. I mean, it's it's very limited and very analog if you think about it. So that's yeah. why I don't see it as much as AI, as more of like an AI tool way. You know, the AI that we're looking at nowadays, it's about something that it's looking to cross. Uh, it's to, it's going to pass the Turing test eventually. Yes, you know? I believe very so. soon. I don't think I don't think some people say that by 2030. I don't think that is five more years away from us, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, like Boston Dynamics, like that thing is amazing. And I think that it's going to be fantastic when it comes out. Uh And, and imagine if that thing on top of being uh, autonomous for moving around anywhere also c can think and rationalize things. I, I was going to say exactly the same thing. I was waiting for you to say that. I think, that integration. I think that everything will start once there's a migration. I mean, a, a, not a migration where there is a mix of those two technologies. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be the, the 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 it's gonna become the cradle of singularity. Hey, I know some people who can't pass the Turing test. <laughs> yes, I Not believe bad, you. I know, I know people too. <laughs> We don't have to wait five hundred. <laughs> so, so um, sorry, I I was called away. The um, dishwasher repairman came early, so. That sounds like the beginning of a porn movie. It does. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, the, the, the culprit for destroying our dishwasher was a cockroach that got oh, into the wow. Oh, unit. God. A cockroach yeah. got stuck in the dishwasher. Yeah. It probably did, you guys right? save, did you guys save her? No, we killed it. Oh, Dead. Bro. <laughs> you guys, you guys, let me ask you guys. This is very random. Do you guys ever watch this movie about this guy that had an apartment full of cockroaches? Joe's apartment. And the cockroaches yeah. like talk and, and dance and shit. Welcome to Joe's apartment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where watch it. What it drugs was, was he taking? It, and it's like, hilarious and disgusting, you know, bro. You know why I remember that movie? Why? My, my oldest daughter is afraid of cockroaches. Oh, and, and God. He, you make you make her watch it? Gio knows, <laughs> knows me. He knows my daughter. And yes, I made her watch. <laughs> she hated you, bro. She hated yeah, you forever. Right. For about <laughs> the movie's disgusting, bro. It's hilarious. But it's disgusting. Right. right? They actually take real cockroaches. They put like little, uh, uh, like, uh, sticks on it, so they can actually make like frame by frame dancing scenes with it. 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's disgusting, bro. It's, it's real cockroaches dancing on big screen, bro. <laughs> it's stop motion. It's stop yes. motion using cockroaches. And they use like these minion, like you have the minion voice there, Robert. Do this, do this up, bro, with the, with the voice. I don't know. Did I? <laughs> with the minion voice, you can do it. <laughs> I don't even know which one it is. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> and Gio has lost it. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Good memories. I watched that movie with my dad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny, bro. My dad was uh, my dad was single back then, bro. And we, we were just like we would, we would go to, we'd stay with him over the weekends and watch movies. And we got it on a rental too. Like the, back with Blockbuster was a good times, like 2001, 2002. And and we just watched it, man. It was fun. Oh man. So uh that's an old one, 296. Yes, it's an old one. Old one. So, Ray, I think I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked uh, Gio. Uh-huh. It's, I'm, off, I'm expecting a completely different answer, obviously. I, I don't know because I don't know what his answer was because I wasn't here. <laughs> well, you know, I was very curious because he seen this movie recently. Mm -hmm. So my question was, seeing the content recently, having the knowledge that this movie came out in 2006, so this was created in 2006 by someone that saw this as a possible, you know, future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and seeing that most of the stuff in this movie, it's partly <laughs> reality by now. Mm -hmm. So in, in your in your case, you've seen this movie, a, 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 you know, way back, not necessarily when the movie came out. So your your comments might be completely different because you know why robert because he was with the guy that was repairing the dishwasher right now yeah. oh my god, god. <laughs> yeah, dishwasher repairment has left all right <laughs> okay. so my when i you know my comments was and and I'd probably it's going to be the same thing as 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 yours ray I, I saw this movie a while back and although i saw the potential of us getting there. Um, I, I was like, okay, this is a movie, you know, I, I doubt things are going to get that bad. And, you know, and, and, and watching this movie after, you know, 2020, it's like, holy crap. Uh, I, I was technically wrong because most of the stuff actually became a reality. Mm. So what is your thought on, on that, on that question? What do you think about Starbucks? Well, well, what you have to, to keep in mind is that this was taken to the nth degree to create humor. So yeah, um, I, I, I'll bring along the, the idea of uh, the only person who's allowed to tell the truth in the royal court is the jester, and that is in, in humor to, to, um, to amuse. And it's funny because it's true is the old saying, and that fits here quite. Um, accurately so you've got uh, a story about people getting dumber basically uh and um and how it's funny because of the way they choose to do things because they don't know any better and then you have the old um idea of person out of time who isn't part of that world and they've got to work out how the world works and they have some sort of advantage. Like, like when you look at anime isekais, they always have an advantage. And this guy has the advantage in that he's incredibly average for our time, but mm -hmm. is the smartest man in the world in 500 years. So he has the advantage of being able to come up with things and think faster than pretty much everyone else on the planet. So whereas they all resort to violence and basal desires of you know sex and money um he can tiptoe around that and use his intellect such as it is i mean wouldn't be able to do it now but in 500 years he can just basically um talk his way out of a lot of things and um uh if he can't do that then he can come up with a way to he can macgyver his way out of it because no one else can think as fast as him or can uh, uh 
you know, has the experience that he has and the intellect that he has to deal with things quickly. So mm. he becomes president of the USA because he can fix the problems, even though he's not sure about how to fix them. He's got more of an idea than anyone else. So, um, you know, uh, if you wait long enough, you can be the smartest person in the room, uh, basically. Uh, so he, um, but, but even having said that, he shows his uh, ineptitude with relationships and understanding because he never worked out that he's, the, the person who became his wife, who came from the past with him, was actually a prostitute. He never figured that out. No, she wasn't being there, bro. Yeah, you saw the painting she did at the end of the movie. Yeah, she's a oh, painter. fantastic. Ah, mm. <laughs> Robert, paints, paint, Robert paints better. I'm a painter too, if that's the case. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually a, a mate of mine who is into off-the-wall movies, like um, another one that he recommended to me, um, Dodgeball. Mm. Yes, it was. It was much in the same vein, sort of that off the wall humor, completely weird, random shit that actually ends up working kind of movie, and much the same way in this one. He 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 liked that sort of thing, so he, he recommended this, and he said, "Oh, you got to rent it. You got to watch it. It's great." Rah. I'd never heard of it. it. It never crossed my my um, recognition until he recommended it to me, and I watched it. And at the time, I thought, yeah, it's funny, but it's a bit depressing, and and um, I really didn't get into it the first time I watched it. But then, rewatching it now with a bit with a few more years tacked on to my understanding of the world, I actually found it really funny. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's a cautionary tale. Um, and yes, I agree. It, it does basic the. the um, um, uh the guy at the end basically does say look read read books um think about things you know use that brain or we're all going to end up so stupid that that society crumbles yeah and, and they're not wrong basically if you don't use it you lose it and unfortunately with the way big businesses and mega corporations and multinationals they all want you to consume and not think about anything and just do what you're told. And yeah. this is basically what will happen if we do that. So you need to think, you need to question, you need to, to use that brain, you need to exercise it, you need to, to think harder, use the IQ points that you have, and we don't want to end up like this. And have kids as well. Like smart people need to have kids. I'm sorry. It just has yeah. to happen. We need to we need to keep the, the the brains in the gene pool so um yeah i mean um both my wife and i are trained scientists and we have a son yay um so we've done our part so what branch uh, of science your your wife works on uh, molecular biology and chemistry mike what molecular biology awesome bro so you guys like throw the lingo at each other just to make fun of each other well, as I was telling yeah, you in the, uh -huh, um, I can see in the pre show, you guys are not doing great today. Well, as I was telling you in the pre show, <laughs> she wanted to apply for a job last night and she got really sick. So I ended up <laughs> writing the job application for her. So, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we do exchange a lot of uh, lingo, scientific lingo, when. Uh, when this, might be, this might be inappropriate, but you guys made a work. You don't have to answer that, right? <laughs> We are, we, we, no, you we, don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah. We did meet at work. We were sharing an office. When they found out we'd started going out, they split us up. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know it. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. <laughs> Robert, you know I always have to ruin it, man. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, uh, I think that's you awesome. Mean, you mean I think that's awesome because you share a passion with your partner. And I think that that's amazing, bro. Because, I mean, it's awesome when you can sit down and talk to your partner about what you do and you have passion for and you actually understand each other about that and you share genuine interest and passion for it, you know? Yeah, like me and my I wife. I think that that's golden. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he, uh, he had to do his Star Trek watching Star wife Trek. thing with Star us. Trek. Yeah, we got to hear that once a week, don't we? Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, look, I, I can fully understand what's, what she's going through when she comes over from work and tells me about it because I used to work there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and and you know what I I, I have to screen share uh, to answer a comment that Captain Chaos uh, did just just earlier. <laughs> so that is a website. It is actually live. So if you guys typed blockbuster.com, this is what comes up. What do you think that means? Hmm. Are they back? Hmm. Just just that, leaving just leaving that there. Isn't that they're back? Well, they're they're technically not back because there's nothing on that website. But that. That's all you see. Maybe it's just a repository. <laughs> Brando the thirst metal. <laughs> Brando. <laughs> the thirst. Oh. What's it called? The thirst mutilator? Thirst mutilator. Mutilator. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ray, what does that binary answer mean, bro? <laughs> mutilator. You don't know what mutilator means? No. No, no. He's talking about those zeros. Is it oh, that, that, that was my cat sending you a <laughs> oh, so your message. cat talks in binary language, bro. Yeah, she it does. Awesome. She also lies on my keypad. She's, li she's lying down <laughs> that's next that's to my keyboard that's at it, the that's moment. That's your key trying to tell you, Ray, the Matrix has you. Well, she no, she was um she was keeping keeping my uh, flame alive while I was busy with the um with the um, dishwasher repairman. She was she was standing in for me. Yeah. Protecting you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm going to move the conversation uh, to another topic that I'm very curious about. Um, in the movie, we see a case study being displayed. Um, I can't remember the names, but there's a couple. Uh, which oh, is God. Your, 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 <laughs> God. It's your average couple, right? This is an average couple that you see. Uh, you know, not necessarily successful, but they have good jobs. They, they, they have a good money. Um, their the IQ is high, right? That's a hundred and something uh, each. One one was one hundred and thirty-one, and one was one hundred and forty. I think the woman yes. was one hundred and forty. Yeah. So the the case story, the, the case uh, study that is being displayed on the basically the beginning of this movie is is studying the. A, a what I like to call a smart couple versus a <laughs> how can trailer trash? You want, me to, not, you, want, you want me to say it's it? Even, it's not even a couple. Uh, well, it is a couple, but I can, it, I, can, I, can, I can use the word, bro. Put it on me right next. Well, not yeah, necessarily, Rur, people that live in rural areas <laughs> that are not. That's not necessarily bro, 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 bro. Motocross in your backyard, living in trailers. Come on, bro. Not all of them do that, but <laughs> okay. So, Mullets. Regardless of how Look you like Joe Dirt. <laughs> regardless of how you call it, right? I, I wouldn't use that name because it, it could be any anyone, right? Read down there, bro. Read down there. We already give the disclaimer. Leave, leaving it's in Captain's Chaos fault. Hate me, bros. <laughs> yeah, but but <laughs> let me let me talk, man. Um, <laughs> it, it could be anyone, right? So uh, the point is, this this person lives in a trailer with his wife, and the wife comes in and says, "You know, I, yeah, I'm pregnant again." And it's like, okay, I thought you were on the on the pill, and so I must have been thinking about. And I think they he named Brittany, which is, I believe, the neighbor. Yes. Meanwhile. The, the, the smart couple is deciding that it's not the right time to have children with today's economy. Fast forward to the end of the movie, right? You have the president, Joe and Rita, having three of the smartest kids and is being outshadowed by the eight wife in the 32 of the dumbest kids, the Frito. <laughs> and whoever of those girls have laughed. So it, 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 it's basically this is what, like a foreshadowing to the end of the movie, basically, but explaining also the situation that the earth has reached in 2505. Yeah. By how 
Darwin. Can we say this is kind of Darwinism? Oh, Lord. In, in, where uh, you could say you could say it's what they call the higher higher male selection process, where so, where females select a, a male, and because of that process, that's gonna eventually affect uh, communal uh, collectively. Uh, what the, the the new generations are, are gonna become eventually, as more of those populate and end up mating, even with the smart ones, and and basically mixing in together. It's what they call the higher uh, higher higher male selections. Actually, most animals uh, that that have their own mating uh, ways and social uh, behaviors mm -hmm. do that. Chimpanzees, lions, zebras, anything. They have that thing, and it's like usually it's because of physical traits. It has nothing to do with uh, brain quality and IQ. You know, yeah, it's, it, it's not like that with humans in the movie. <laughs> it happens in a lot of mammalian species. Um, you know, like um, deer, and you know anything where the quality of the male is is the the one thing that that um, decides which male gets to mate with the females happens yeah. in kang kangaroos as well you have yeah. a dominant male and all the other males that he chases off and then he mates with all the females so he's like the the gene provider the strongest yeah and, and in the movie um the guy who has the eight wives and the 32 kids he's the um uh, he's a football player i think no 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 he's he he's, he was the lawyer who was hopeless Mm -hmm. Oh and he, yes, and he was made deputy um, president or vice president, and the, he was seen. the The women saw him. He's vice president. He's got lots of money. I'm going to get with him, and and then we'll be set. So that was the the entirety of the thinking. And it's very much as you say, like in the wild, where you have one male that gets to mate with all the females because he's the strongest. And then there's a competition between all the males and the, the, the strongest male, once his condition weakens because he's done all this defending of the of the females and, and um, fighting off the males, um, he ends up getting knocked down and then the next strongest one comes up. And, it, and it's a cycle. You don't have pairings. You have harems. Yeah. Yes. It's called, it's called sexual selection, actually. So... So sexual selection, I was telling Robert, I think that you went off camera, but sexual selection is where, where biologically, and the, the thing is that most uh, animals, they are not monogamous. They are some, but it's very rare. Like, for example, I don't know if you guys knew, condors, they are monogamous. So basically, A lot of birds mate for life with one partner. Exactly. And if that, that partner dies, they don't ever mate again. But that's very rare. Uh but basically, uh, all all those species that you mentioned, like uh, it's called the, the sexual selection peacocks. Uh, actually, I don't know if you guys know that by by definition of our DNA, uh, we are actually closest to the chimpanzee, to the bonobo. And I mean, they bang even to say hello. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, but they they do have dynamics that are very like uh, what it's a primal behavior for humans too, like. Like the the female stays in, in the in the in the house or whatever they home themselves at, takes care of the of the of the offsprings. The male goes out and hunts. They have uh, they have not exactly the same but similar social dynamics with other males where they go hunting together. They kind of ruffle tumble play with the younger ones, try to teach them and usher them in into adulthood and things like that. Uh, it's very interesting actually. Uh, I think I I listened to a. Uh, documentary uh, Jordan Peterson was talking about like describing uh, humans in their psychology compared to the most closest uh, uh, primal pri pri primate family that we're related to but of course it's been debunked we don't come from monkeys <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> but it, it happens it happens on a, on a psychological social way too if you think about it with us humans you know where where female will select the high, the higher selection uh, the higher quality male, so like a, a good provider, and in a in a in a man that is of good appearance that can fulfill uh, those roles as as a, as a as a partner, you know, a provider, and then where the woman has the babies and takes care of the babies, and so and so, you know. 
So it's yeah. called sexual selection. Yeah. Um, just one thing that you mentioned there is that um, we don't come from monkeys. Monkeys and humans come from a um, uh, an ancestor, which was the same ancestor which divided and then part part became monkeys and part became humans. So Homo it doing doing. came from monkeys. It's a case that if you go far enough back, we have a common ancestor. Yeah. Uh, which, which, was the guys, less, which was far less than a monkey and far less than a human. I think that yeah. you mentioned it, the what you mentioned it are the guys that are in Space Odyssey throwing bones on the air and dancing around the monolith, right? Uh, you know that that was never <laughs> that was never expressed. And as a matter of fact, if you notice, <laughs> they don't quite look like monkeys. No. Uh, and I think that was done on purpose because they're yeah. using some weird suits and guides in the suits for that for those scenes. Yes. So yes. I think that's what they try to represent. Yes, they uh, tried that. Because the, the movie is very visual, right? Mm -hmm. There's not very much context towards the beginning. Well, actually, uh, agreed. Most parts of the movie. Is. Yeah, the movie is very inter like it's mm -hmm. very open to interpretation. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. abstract. That's the word. The, that, the, the Space Odyssey starts very abstract as a movie, and it ends very abstract. It's a very psychedelic movie when it comes to uh, what you can make out of what it is. You know, it's like it's a mind fuck, bro. <laughs> Space Odyssey is like one of a kind, man. <laughs> like, wow, bro. <laughs> Till oh. this day. For all of you out there who are not aware, um, 2001 Space Odyssey is our uh, number five most downloaded episode. Um, so if you want to get our uh, more of our thoughts on that, I invite you guys to download that episode. It was uh, during season one. Um, great, great, great conversation. You, great said, you said number you five. Know. I thought it was number one. Yes. No, it's, I think it's, that, uh, it was unfortunately uh, Artemis Fowl, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Number one most downloaded episode is 2001 Space Odyssey. Yeah. Oh, you were saying number five. Yeah, no, I, number five. I was thinking, I probably said number five. I was thinking because I, I, I look at the top five most downloaded. Oh. And within the top, within the top five, um, obviously, this is overall, even top five or not, is the most downloaded episode ever. So I probably said it wrong. <laughs> Robert, have you been sniffing leaded gasoline again? Uh, I think I have way too many Stellas. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would explain it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Moving right so, on. <laughs> go, going back to this movie, well, yeah. what I what I found very curious is how the smart couple in this movie, they were basically just giving out excuses, which I know from yeah. their point of view are not excuses, right? Um. But this is what happens when you are not aware of your surroundings. And and I don't blame them because the type of awareness you need for this would be like global awareness, which is very hard for uh, individuals to, to... And maybe this is a part of the message of the movie, right? So they are, you know, the excuses are very under understandable. You know, they're, 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 they just... They got married. They, they need to get a house uh, so they can provide. They need to get a better job so they can provide for the for the kid. That oh, the economy is, is not good. We should wait. Uh, in the meantime, when we look at the other uh, person uh, in this uh, case sample, uh, they're not thinking none of that. The guy is just thinking, who's the hottest chick in the trailer park, and who am I going to bang next? Without thinking of consequences. So when you look at this comparison, um, by the time the, the, the sequence ends, the whole screen of your TV is filled with the offspring of this guy. While we look at the other couple, the guy actually died masturbating to Best provide ever. examples for the insemination of the wife. So they ended up having no children in the end, um, after the other one, so it's it's kind of understandable, um, you know, it, it, a little far fetched, but you could see how um, society in this movie went that way, and, and that's and, where we're trying to get to. And just to add to that, if you look at it from a critical standpoint, too, the guy that reproduced the most 
is depicting a more primal behavior than a mm -hmm. socially socially evolved human understandable behavior if you think about exactly. it you know i i agree so yeah that's what that's what i was uh, getting to so i was i wanted to get your your thoughts on 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 that case scenario that we saw in the movie and and how i mean i i love how, Rolla. like even when he got the accident he hurt his crutch and then the bubble the three years ago <laughs> It was just like mayhem, bro. Robert, Robert, oh. I just I just Google Professor Google. Ask Professor Google. Man dies of heart attack while masturbating. <laughs> I'm going to Google and right I now, got bro. teen masturbates fifty six times, dies of heart attack from Punch newspapers. Right handed man almost masturbates to death. Case study from New York Post. Complex hospital employee dies at work while masturbating to porn, and he had a heart attack. Uh, man dies of heart attack while masturbating at sperm bank. Uh, thought catalog. Um, so yeah, I don't wow. think it's as far fetched. Sixty-two times. Sixty-two times in a row, masturbated. He dies. Oh my god! No. Yeah, that's, that's another. That's one. the threshold, guys. You can do it sixty times, but not six. Do no bullshit, guys. <laughs> don't do something <laughs> stupid. I just fucking can't. I, I, <laughs> god, I think bro. I think the flesh of your wing would rub off before you. Bloody oh, got my that god, oh my god, that's like a, oh my god, I can't even think. Of it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you say oh, that sounds a bit far fetched. You just Google it. <laughs> I just Google place. Rose. The oh, Lord is yeah. a strange place. So there you go. Oh Lord, bro, internet is even farther more strange. Mm -hmm. So, what is your thought on that, Ray? Like uh, the case study, basically uh, overall, um, as it, a general sense. Uh, well, I felt that they really put a lot of effort into this movie that's not really taken like taken account of because of the lowbrow sort of um, take on on the issues of the movie. Um, oftentimes I'll watch science fiction and speculative fiction and I'll go, that makes no sense. Why, why would you say that? You just... Just threw that in there because it was convenient. Um, poor, poor story writing, um, what have you. No, this movie hangs together really, really well. I could not fault it. I could not fault the logic. I could not fault the case study. Everything that they said. And the, there's the voiceover guy that keeps explaining stuff. And it all makes sense. There's, there's no logic holes there's no plot massive plot holes you could drive a truck through or anything like that or a or a dildozer or whatever you <laughs> want to be driving at the time but um uh yeah i mean yeah i mean frighteningly possible quite frighteningly possible um i i mean i know people who who are on the more intelligent side who've got degree science degrees and and university degrees and their lawyers and so forth and so on and they all leave having kids till the last minute um they all sort of hang back and of course it's that whole you never feel ready for kids you, you mm -hmm. never feel adult enough you never feel like you know enough um yeah. i've only i've only had the one kid and it was it was a real eye opener. It was a struggle. It's a life changing that's, uh, yeah. experience, probably. and 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 you never feel ready. And for people who overthink, Robert, um, you <laughs> could you could often wait too long because you're overthinking it and you're saying, "I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready," mm -hmm. and and panicking yourself out of reproducing, and that's bad. Uh, if you've got the intelligence, you need to pass that on. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't have a kid, but I can ask you both. I mean, it's being it was the best experience that you ever had having children, wasn't it? Uh, it, was, have... it was scary as fuck, but yeah. yes, you, I, but, the, but the, the, I mean, Robert, Robert, Robert girls are already grown up, they're about my age, but you have a young boy, he's about 10, right? Right? Oh, yeah, my son, yeah, he turns 10 in a couple of months, yeah, and I mean, I mean, I, I, I just can't imagine because I don't have one. But I mean, it must be like heartwarming and wholesome to be able to enjoy things with him and share time with him and see him grow up, just like Robert did with his girls. It mm -hmm. it, it it can be, 
but you know, there's always two sides to the coin, and there's oh, of the... course, no, he can drive you mad and crazy yeah, sometimes. But, yeah, well, that's part but, of the job. But don't <laughs> listen. The, like I spent, I spent like five or six years constantly trying to get him to say please and thank you, and it only sticks, <laughs> it only sticks occasionally still. So oh god, he's a hard headed little one. Huh? <laughs> uh... Because he asked me for things, he goes, "Daddy, can I have some Robux for 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 um, um what is it? Roblox, the, the game that all yeah, the yeah, the game, the game Roblox, yeah." And and he goes, "Can I have some Robux?" I'm like, "No." He goes, "Can I have some Robux, please?" I go, "Who are you talking to?" Can I have some Robux, please, Daddy? And I'm going, "Hmm, have you done anything good recently?" <laughs> you know, it, everything. There, there's all these gates he's got to cross, and he's got to think about it, and he's got to, he's got to make the effort. And, and you know, um, you know, bringing kids up is is hard work. They, they, they they're, yeah. they're thick headed. They do the bare minimum, um, unless you're really lucky and you have one that's desperate for, for. Um, uh, pats on the head from you in which case they might actually make a bit more of an effort but um i'm forever getting to pick stuff off off the floor um he leaves like um ice block wrappers and and paddle pop sticks all over the place and uh it's just it's a constant hassle trying to get him to clean up after himself but um i guess i probably i was probably no different i I don't have a recollection of that far back in those little details, but I suspect it was exactly the same. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think I think it's, at the end of the day, I think it's an important part of, of life, and I think that it's a beautiful thing. And, and I mean, I, I I I I love seeing that one with my niece, even though it's not my daughter. And like today, I was watching like I used to watch Power Powerful Girls when I was a kid. Yeah, and like. Like they put to her like sometimes like all these Disney cartoons and like she just like lose the the interest right away. And today I put Powerpuff Girls for her, which I used to watch when I was like eight or nine, and she just stayed watching it with me for like three hours. It was just the most fun, just watching her enjoy it, man, dancing to the songs and Mojo Jojo. <laughs> it was fun, man. My and favorite I mean, was Oh my god, I, my favorite one is him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Him, the red guy, <laughs> the red guy with the clampers, and like he has like a tutu. <laughs> He's like the devil. <laughs> it's just hilarious, bro. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I would. I would think you you would pick Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo, I love him, bro. But like Mojo Jojo got like like mainstream. Like they just burn him out. Uh, another one that I really like is uh, oh, before you the, move the, on. Before you move the on, pink guy. Ray, have you have you seen uh, Powerpuff Girls? Not really, no. It wasn't okay. anything that was. Uh, well, I don't have a daughter, so it wasn't. Oh, I was a boy and I watched uh, Powerpuff Girls, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a Powerpuff Girls gives you that vibe. It's for girls, but it's not really. It's, it's just a kid's cartoon. It, it, it goes in the in the ray with uh, Dexter in the laboratory, Cow and the Chicken, Ed, Ed and Eddie. Like those kind of cartoons were playing at the same time and they were the, kind of the same cartoon fun to watch you know it's uh for, 19 for 1998 mm -hmm. that's pretty much and yeah, you uh, had all that stuff hbo max yeah Hulu. i actually was watching it they have it on netflix too uh, at least over here uh and, and i mean before that i used to watch even older stuff like i used to watch actually what they call boomerangs today which was just cartoon network by then you had scooby-doo uh you had uh freaking uh the, the the white phantom from coast to coast. You remember that one, Robert? Uh, uh space coast, coast to space coast. coast. It was uh, that was. I think I was talking about this in other episodes. It was smartly made a, a, a show because it was like a host show. Yeah, the power of girls, bro. Buttercup, bubble, and oh my god, buttercup, bubble, and blossom. Yeah. That was their names. Okay, <laughs> moving away. <from> <laughs> <laughs> it went, it went fun, from idiocracy to Barb of Girls. Du, 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 du. <laughs> that oh, is going back, <laughs> going, going back to to reconnect and going back to the rails. Powerpuff is sci-fi if you think about it. Yes, it is. It is actually. It, it is, is funny sci-fi. because Powerpuff Girls is a a, a professor, a, a lab, a laboratory professor that wanted mm -hmm. to have daughters and he couldn't, so he used a recipe to make girls. And then he put the X factor, so they came out as super powerful little girls. 
<laughs> they use uh, what is it, sugar and spice and everything nice? Is that what they yeah, say? Yeah, sugar, head? spice, and everything nice, <laughs> and a little drop of X, and then an accident happened. Boom! And yeah. the Powerpuff Girls came out. Brought to you by my car, Junior. Thanks for that. I think we need to move on into back to, the back to the show. Back to the show, yeah. Back to the show. <laughs> Although you know, I, I I think we should do an episode of Powerpuff Girls because he's on there. I'd have to watch right. it, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, you will like it, bro. Ah, we should oh, do man. an episode. Actually, you know, in who man that, that actually that's that is sci-fi. Dexter in the lab. Oh, Dexter's laboratory. <laughs> oh my god, that is fun, bro. Oh, oh supersonics, the, the Jetsons. We never did the, the, talk about the Jetsons. That's sci fi, bro. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a lot. Jetsons of is sci fi as hell, man. Did you ever watch the Jetsons, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I everybody. Thinks it's yeah, man, those are good ones. Me, George Jetson. Yeah, he's boy <laughs> Elroy. <laughs> <laughs> But going back, putting putting ourselves back into the rails. I mean, yeah, I agree with Ray was was saying too. Like this, this was a, a telltale like uh, where things could go uh, if we were not cautious enough. Like I mentioned before, and I wanted to also Ray's thought on that. Like, like I was telling Robert, uh, like I think that they didn't play out much of what AI role would actually. In, uh, in influence in our evolution as a whole species it doesn't it, they really like side like put it on the side behind the scenes mm -hmm. and it yeah. doesn't feel it didn't feel at any given point even when i saw the machines talking it didn't feel sentient it felt very mechanical and, and programmed if you want to call it something the like funny very, thing very is very it was entry. Because if you look at the funny thing is, it was basically the boss. Because if you look at when he went into the hospital and he's asking the lady, the lady is looking like she's on on drugs or something. Yeah, <laughs> mentally she's absent. Not responding at all. She's looking at she's looking at an analog table that looks like a kid's toy, <laughs> which yeah. which kind of like it kind of like makes a graphic little image of what could be the symptom. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the the AI tells, you know, to move on to whatever. I said, well, thank you. And it responds, oh, you're welcome. And he's like, you know, he, he felt for the moment, like you can see in his face, like, okay, this lady's not talking. And this is, he's basically talking to a machine. So, yeah, I, I see your point there. It's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> It was funny. What, well. what, I, what I found disturbing was the fact that the, the three probes weren't labeled, so the guy couldn't work out. <laughs> oh, which my one, God. Man. Which one went in the mouth, the ear, and the ass? So, yeah. Oh, God. I found more disturbing that he went and, like, washed his mouth with, Ra with Brando because he actually yeah. did it. Yeah. Like, I didn't think he would have done it. <laughs> and, and, and then he asked he asked the passerby where he could get some water. And like, what, like in the toilet? <laughs> and they'll answer him. <laughs> but you know, I had to mention this movie must be a thing in the medical community because, and let me explain why. I had had this funny um, remark from multiple doctors that have actually attended me when I need to have, um, you know, those, those, and I can remember. That maybe you guys would know. Um, there's a test they they put something in your mouth and to look at your stomach. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And there's and there's obviously the 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 um, colonoscopy where they yeah. go in you know the other way. So in in a couple of occasions, I've had to to have uh, there's a combined procedure. I don't know how you, how you would call that where the doctor actually does both uh, in the same visit. And on many occasions, I had the doctor said, oh, make sure they put the the, the uh, right thing in the right end. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and that always, every time... And it's not one doctor. I had had many doctors say that that comment uh, as a funny joke. And, and the, every time that they say that, that I always think back to this movie. Yeah. They're all fucking comedians, these doctors, these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you something. 
look for for looking at the bones they did the x-rays so looking at a at, at cancer in breast they have the the mammograms now and still mind's boggling to me that for checking uh if we have a, a, like for checking our colon they still have to stick a finger up our asses a camera <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why would you have to be probing the ass? Why did I have a chainsaw? We just like get scanned up and that's it. <laughs> Maybe aliens are us in the future. God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. <laughs> no point intended, right? Brought to you by Carl's. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Carl's <laughs> Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, and I mean, uh, moving moving on to the to the movie. You know something I found very curious, but it was also part of the telltale. I went to uh, actually a religious school Adventist, and it's funny when I watched this movie the first time. I think I mentioned it to you, man. The mark of the beast. Everybody had a barcode on themselves. Yeah, and that was kind of odd. It it, it it was kind of humorous, but it was kind of dark if you think about it. Because everybody's marked and everybody's just a number. Well, you know, I can see how this could become our future. Um, it, it, nowadays, uh, let's say, for example, uh, people that live in China, right? Yeah. If you want to pay, they don't use cash anymore. Social credit score. You have to have one or two apps on your phone to be able to pay for uh, products and services. I can't remember the name of those apps. But uh, the reason why I'm mentioning this is I find it curious because I have seen a couple of, um, you know, those social videos, the short videos that you watch online, where multiple people that actually moved from the U.S. to China. Um, and, and they found that really weird that you go in with cash to a store to buy something and they look they look at you like you're like you're crazy yeah, and they stranger, don't know yeah. what to do with the cash so uh, you know that's just that's just an example obviously mm -hmm. um like i for example hate using cash right I, I like using my apple pay um or or my credit card my debit cards whatever um so i can see how we can migrate into this thing where the, the every like monetary transaction is linked to your uh, let's call it social security number if you are in the in the US I'm not sure what the equivalent would be in your country or, or in um, in Australia um and 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 be a barcode because it's convenient for the store clerk to just scan you whenever you get a whatever is if you get you know whatever product or service that you're actually purchasing. A barcode or a subcutaneous implant. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, a, near, a near field communication device. But but I, I mean I'm, I mean you guys would agree that it's kind of dark and in, inhuman. Like everybody will have to have that, or you will actually start start to struggle to be part of society. It's like coerce. It's like pushing something into humanity. It's not like you have the option. It's it's uh, you know. Well, and it's they, the, kind of, they kind of like low key playing it in there when they did that. It's and the it's ultimate government up. control in that yes. um, you can't, to be part of society, you can't avoid having one. So yes. therefore, you can be tracked in what, everything that you do. And the, the, the whole thing about the government hating the cash economy in mm -hmm. that they can't track it, like it's voluntary mm -hmm. to. to yeah say oh uh, i made this cash payment and then, or i was i was paid this for my the services i provided and therefore i have to pay tax on it mm -hmm. uh, if you paid cash there's no uh there's no way to track it electronically so therefore you can sneak it through and not pay tax on it and that the government doesn't want that the government yeah. wants to pay tax on every single thing you ever do coming and going when you get paid you can pay tax when you buy something you pay tax yeah so they mm -hmm. want to get coming and going. A lot of people hate that. So they want to do cash economy where it can't be tracked by the government. Um, so, um, you know, that's what they're trying to stamp out. And this whole system of 
well, you've got to you've got to use your barcode to pay for things. You can't use cash. Um, but obviously, in this movie, they were still using cash for hookers and stuff like that because you saw um, uh, Rita being paid by that guy who was waiting for his mm -hmm. son for days. Yeah. And paid, paid <laughs> by the hour. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, think know? about think think <laughs> about it. Like like the, the that a new system that will require uh, like paperless cash, uh, paperless money. It's not really viable with how the course of evolution that socially humanity took on idiocracy, you know? It, it, like, they are not really mentally ca equipped to deal with that. I don't even think that they understand the value of money in this in, in the movie already. Would you agree? I, yeah, I, I like money. I agree, especially for that comment that Ray just said. When Frito mm -hmm. says, I like money. <clears throat> It, it, it's and even at that when when remember when when uh joe was asking him about taking him to the time machine yes and he yes. says like well, well uh, how much are you going to give me is like uh uh 10 10, 10 million 10, 10 billion 10 billion, billion. billion. Time, it's like you know the time machine costs 20. to and me he actually like, just threw that out there like the time machine costs 20. like he didn't really meant or knew that but even and at that it was I proven mean, when, when he said, "Okay, I'm, I'll give you, I'll give you what was it, thirty? That he said. So yeah, he's like, 30. "Okay, if it's thirty, and the time machine costs twenty, how how much is thirty minus twenty? And he says eighty, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, that's a lot of money. I like money." <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I got all this cash here. I wonder if it's for lattes. Yeah, it's probably for lattes. Yeah, let's go get some lattes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I, something that I found curious is that even though everything evolved so, so drastically in society as the years went by, in in somewhat police uh, enforcement still worked at some degree. Do you realize that? Like, I mean, not to the best and not yeah. in the most ethical way, but they were able to come, pursue you, grab you, and take you to somewhere. But what? But yeah. what about like they will they find you? They will find you and track you down. Right. They will do that effectively. It was funny, you know. But what about when they blew the shit out of his car and he was laughing about it because he thought it was funny? Yeah, no, and, that was uh, that, that's the thing. It, and the shows, airplane. <laughs> yeah, the airplane, bro. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> He's celebrating it. The guy's like, bro, let's get out of here, man. Well, just think about this one. Police is using rocket launchers Jesus at point blank range. Exactly. <laughs> and firing them backwards and taking out aircraft. Oh, God, bro. It was too much. <laughs> so, it yeah, they were effective, but I think it was like a, uh, it was the mallet on a nail. If, yeah. you, if you understand my meaning. Yeah. And, and I mean, let's not exclude that when he went to trial, when he went to trial, his defense lawyer is the first one that pushes to the front. <laughs> he says that this guy broke my house and he speaks like a faggot. <laughs> it was just, uh, and they're like, dude, you're my lawyer. <laughs> it was just hilarious, man. Oh, God. It was just yep. hilarious, man. Hey, that's not I mean, what, my, I that's not what the other lawyer said. <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine having a lawyer that says that comment to you? Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but then he just said, "Hang on, I'm supposed to be released today." And they went, "Well, you're in the wrong line, idiot!" <laughs> 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 oh, oh they, they, you think you're going to be able to escape again? Oh no, no, they fixed that one. How'd they fix it? Oh, they chained me to a massive boulder. So I can't <laughs> run away. <laughs> that was so funny. That was too funny. Hey, hey, what, what, what was it called when they took him to? To recreation, what's it called? Rehabilitation. 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 Oh, that's not bad. In <laughs> the moment that he's like, not bad. I know it's <laughs> rehabilitation. Oh, that's not so bad. Not so bad, huh? It's only one. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> and the like house, the the, uh, speaking the house representing. <laughs> Yeah. I, I liked it when they came out of the Starbucks and he went, well, no, we're in there. Was that wearing pants? 
What do I look like? The pants gremlin? <laughs> you know, that is, it's funny, but it's kind of scary because if you think about it, most of these people in this reality are used not wearing pants most of the day. Because what you do yeah. is when you get back to wherever it is you come from, I'm assuming you have jobs, right? So you come home and, and you put your pants down, sit down on the uh, sofa slash toilet and watch the, yeah. the rest of the night. And eat and poop right there. So you, you only, I would only imagine that humanity in this world is accustomed to not wearing pants. Yeah. yeah, or being basically naked from the from the waist down because that's you know that's what you do when you sit down on the toilet. <laughs> Bro, so, so, so that's what you want to go to, Robert. That's your that's your idea. Oh God, it? he he actually was suggesting when we were watching like I want to watch one 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 Bible, but one of those. I was like, you know, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, Akia, if you're listening. <laughs> 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 oh lord what, what do they call them um la a lazy boy toilet seat there you oh. go with speakers to watch tv yeah <laughs> and i mean don't go further like did you do you realize when he put the shirt on to take out the onesie uh, orange tub where he got the t-shirt from there were like disposable dispenser t-shirts yeah yeah, everything was one one wear, and then you threw it away. That's why there was massive piles of garbage everywhere. Oh my god! And I you mean, and I'll tell you, that. you don't no, realize yeah. that, but that's a message right there. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, consumerism, man. And, and I'll tell you something. It, it was kind of scary, like to me, like it was painful to my eyes. There was not a single piece of clothing in the whole movie that was a regular flat color pattern. That's it. It, was all it had like weird, weird, ugly like branding all over. It was like a conglomeration of branding and and, and and advertising everywhere in clothing, in every little piece of paper and wall that you were watching. It was some branding of something. There was not a clean wall with nothing. Well, the columns that were like the last remand of freaking highways already gone. That was the only thing that was not painted with something. Everything else was like a branding of something just like conglomerated everywhere. It was the just TV? like painful to my eyes. You're watching TV and it's the little screen in the middle because everything around that is commercials. Oh my God, man. Do you know what that reminds me of? Remember when we were watching uh, Ready Player One? What, <laughs> <laughs> what, what the, uh, Sorrento wanted to do with, with Oasis, that he wanted to like fill up the whole screen exactly. <laughs> before you got epileptic attack. That was, that, that was what it reminded me right off. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, it's it's basically taking, you know, the big multinational consumer-driven um, ethic and cranking it up to 11 <laughs> and, and making it funny. And it was and it, and it harks back to what I was saying. When you make it a comedy, you can tell the truth. Yes. In, in a in an exaggerated and, and sarcastic way and get away with it. And you know, that's what we're seeing now. I mean, if if the advertising execs were given their way, that's what you'd have. You would have a massive screen in your house, but you'd only have a very small part of it that's the actual show, and the rest would have advertising on it. That's what they yeah. would do. They mm -hmm. would force feed you advertising 24-7 if they could. Yeah. I mean, honestly, what do you think that I don't like watching actually cable TV? Because every time that I put it, it's like I get my whatever I'm watching. If I find something worth watching, it's like it gets interrupted by 15 minutes of the same commercial every 20 minutes. Like I like I watch like they will put maybe the same commercial in that break, maybe two or three times. In between all the commercials, and it's saturating. Mm. And most well, people don't complain. I don't care about it. Well, we we have the, this this um, uh, sort of TV digital TV box called a Fetch Box, and it gets channels from free to air TV and from from paid services. And the paid services have exactly five minutes of ads every fifteen minutes. So what my son does is we record them, and then he's got this button that does a five minute jump. So he five minute jumps as soon as the ads start and it gets Brilliant. straight back to the show. Just Brilliant, like, bro. Straight there. And I never I never knew it did that. And he worked that's there. brilliant. Nice. He's a genius, man. 
He's his father's and mother's son, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would never realize that, man. So I I got another question for you guys. In the movie, we don't know exactly, or at least if there is, I missed it. How long was it from the time the Brando had that law to replace water or Brando for everything? I mean, we even see car washes using Brando, right? Yeah. So the only place for water is in the, the toilet, toilet. And nowhere else. So think about it. We have babies drinking Brando instead of water. Or instead of milk. Which begs the question of how humanity was not extinct before. Because that yeah. would have eliminated right there. I think that was a comical, uh, uh, would you say, uh, merciful way to put it? That humanity kept on going because that really would have exterminated and make the mortality rate of birth incredibly 100% secure. Well, well, maybe maybe it wouldn't be a case of you give them Brando all the time, but they'd probably force fed babies Brando occasionally to get them used to it because it's all you could get um, <laughs> after you got off the breast milk. So, and well, I mean, I, but but I think the breast milk wouldn't have the nutrients and and what you uh, would need to really sustain a baby either. Yeah. I, I have a I have a two part question, right? The the first the first question is, I don't know how long has humanity been drinking brando instead of water after the law was paused um it doesn't really say in the movie no they said several hundred years ago brando brought up the fda the fcc and the usda so so my question is i'm assuming that you still drink milk because we see cows right so the babies will drink milk as well But, you know, babies, you always, you know, I have I have daughters. I had two daughters. Uh, occasionally, you give them water, you know, in, instead of milk. Um, what would Brando... And Robert breastfed them, too. <laughs> uh, what would be the <laughs> equivalent of, you know, the equivalent for, for this would be, what is it, Gatorade, right? Yeah. What would do replacing water? <laughs> on a baby, what would it do to the human body? Just completely removing water and replacing it with Gatorade. I have an idea mm. of what could do. I think that it from, could create from baby. From baby. Didn't from baby. Oh, okay. From baby. I was going to say, didn't, that... didn't Gio do an experiment in this a while back? No, no, no. But I think that if you look at it like a, like the first, if I believe based on my reading studies, the first five to seven years of a, a human creature are the most eminent ones for the development of their biology. And thinking that you're giving that to a baby, it could develop, if it makes it through childhood, it could develop very chronic cardiac issues. And, and malnutrition really because water is like necessary for sustaining so much that I don't know if you guys knew but you can survive only on water for I think more than two weeks 21 days I think that you can live on only water before you actually die because you haven't eaten anything so think about that and you take water away it, it doesn't really hydrates you because it gives it giving you some hydration but it's counter Uh, doing that with the, all the electrolytes, which is something that puts you like in, in a burning fat mode. It actually activates your adrenal system. And that's just something that a baby should get to, really. So when you're doing that, it could really create like big, big deformations uh, on their development, biologically speaking, in many other ways too, not only the cardiovascular systems. Well, it also think. cause you kidney problems as well. Yes, trying to filter It, out all those electrolytes, but the, um, the the issue really comes down to osmosis and um, fluid balance, because your your cells have a certain amount of um, ions in them, which is what electrolytes are. They're ions, um, but they're a particular type of ions. So the I can literally just grab a battery, open the cap, and just suck it up and get some no, ion. no, 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 it's an ion no. battery. Yeah, it's slightly different. 
They, they uh -huh. use the same word in, in a couple of different ways, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, ions in fluids, not in that that like, So I can dip the battery in water, actually? Not recommended. Don't do that at home, kid. <laughs> only Captain okay. Chaos can do that, okay? Yeah, only, only he can get away with this shit. Um, so so there's, there's ions in your cells and there's ions in the interstitial fluid around your cells, which comes from your blood, right? So if you increase the amount of ions in your in your um, digestive tract, that gets into your blood, gets into your interstitial fluids. Now, if there's a higher iron concentration in your interstitial fluids than there is in your cells, your cells dehydrate because the water rushes out of them. Mm -hmm. And you can dehydrate on a cellular level and that can kill you. So you don't want to do that. So, um, yeah, sports drinks are great for replacing irons when you sweat them out when you exercise, but they should not be taken all the time. That's so bad. I was not completely right on it, but I was kind of a little bit close to it. Yeah. I mean, you, you're on the right track, but you just didn't have all of the ducks. No. Yeah. But well, that was interesting to know, too. Now I am more armed with information. Yeah, but oh. th 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 there's all these equilibriums between membranes around cells and in various parts of the body, and um, you don't want to mess with those those concentrations on either side of the membrane too much because you can dehydrate or overhydrate um, yeah. on the opposite side. Um, just, a, just as an example, a great way to kill mold uh, is to use 50% um, uh, water, 50% um no not bleach um um vinegar yeah vinegar 50 percent 50 percent water 50 percent vinegar and a small amount of dishwashing detergent mix it up in a sprayer and spray it on on any sort of mold colonies that you see wait 10 minutes or so and then wipe wipe it away and then give the area another spray so what it does is it makes the the um it makes the mold Overeat, overfeed. It, it feeds on the, on the um, uh, water and vinegar. On the vinegar, and then it um, it, it swells up. And what the soap does is it weakens the membranes. So, so if it you goes make, off. So if you make if you if you make a um, a microorganism swell up and weaken its membrane, it pops and kills it. Wow. That's you, that that's a. That's an ecologically friendly way of getting rid of mold. And I, and I actually do it to this day. I actually make uh, that for home detergent. I do half water and half uh, vinegar, white vinegar, with yeah. with a little bit of home detergent. But like it's like a little droplet. Yeah. It's not you even much. Hear, it, you hear hit first. A science fiction remedy. <laughs> Uh, it's a home <laughs> remedy. It's been around forever. I don't think you hear it <laughs> first, but you may have been reminded about it. Yeah. Brought to you by Carl's. I, I actually, some, <laughs> brought to you by Carl's here. <laughs> and, and I actually, sometimes, like, instead of putting, uh, <laughs> because I actually will put, uh, instead of uh, dish soap, I will actually just squeeze a, a lime on it. And I use dish soap. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, equilibrium between or around membranes is important for lots of organisms, uh, including ourselves. So, yeah, the only times you should be having sports drinks is after sport, or if you've been vomiting and you need to replace uh, electrolytes within your electrolyte system. <laughs> but if you live on the stuff, you will fuck up your uh, cells and your um, kidneys. So yeah, avoid that. Yeah, I believe it. Okay. Yeah, I'm up for that. So, we have come to the part of this podcast that belongs with Captain Chaos. First thoughts, second thoughts, last thoughts. <laughs> and after last thoughts. That's like the after party of thoughts. <laughs> So, um, what is, uh, and you know, any of you can go first, but what is your last thoughts on this movie? Um, uh, after, you know, I know, for example, in, in Captain Chaos' um, case, uh, 
it's going to be very short because he just saw it recently. So maybe I don't know if maybe we should start with him. Um, it it might be a little different for for me and uh, Ray because we've seen it. Uh, well, at least I've seen it multiple times since um, 2008, 2009 for me. Um, what is your last thought on this movie? Uh, in your case, do you after seeing it recently? Um, I think that the movie it, it's smartly done. It has good comedy, great comedy, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I like the most is that it gives. It, it, I think it connects with everybody because they use all of these like uh, marketing elements that you see on a daily basis, but you really don't pay attention to it. You don't care to really look at them or anything, but. When you look at them on the movie, you're like, oh, shit. Like, you look at the guy in Costco, like, welcome, welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> you're like, oh, shit, you got a greeter still. <laughs> and then, like, watching a Starbucks and see, like, what it has become. <laughs> or h and Block. Hey, we need to go to h and Block, bro. Foot Ruckers. I, I love Foot Ruckers. Uh, you mean butt fuckers? No, Foot Ruckers. <laughs> Well, in this movie, they have butt fuckers. <laughs> well, the weird thing is that the guy reads butt fuckers and then he sees kids eating food inside of the place. And you're like, shit, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, but, but I think that what that does is is very <laughs> smart. <laughs> it's just like the dark version of chuck and cheese. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, that's the first thing that came to mind. Chuck and oh, cheese. Oh God, yes. <laughs> Uh, but but I think that it's it, it was very smart actually because it it creates that bridge in between the audience and and, and the products of everyday consumption really and, and and I mean it doesn't really give that importance to those products but it creates that bond between the audience and the material the movie when you look at all those things and you have seen it somewhere you have eaten that somewhere too. Uh, and it makes you, it kind of rubs, it gives you that element that I like about movies when it rubs you away into the storytelling. <laughs> Brought to you by Kasia Jr. <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically, I think that it's something that everybody should watch. I think that it's a uh, tasteful comedy. Uh, you can enjoy it regardless if it's a telltale of what the future can be. Again, I think that it would, would have been highly interesting. It would have made it a little bit more serious to the movie. If there would have been a sentient AI behind all this, you know, yeah. it, it would have made it a little bit darker, but it would have made it more like, uh, like uphill battle if we want to put it somehow. Because then it's not like he just got to. The, I mean, the most average guy, which was the smartest guy in the movie, really didn't have a hard task ahead of him. He's just lazy and average, you know. But I mean, like. Any of us, like, I mean, I won't be the, the most average here, but both of you guys, you would have been like freaking Einstein's <laughs> figures, but he made that bomb probably. <laughs> Cody <Quoting> Rita. <laughs> I'd be in trouble because I'd want to use Google and it wouldn't help. <laughs> hey, it would have been interesting to see what became of Google on that time. Well, era, you know right? became of Google. Google was what? a porn Google was a porn star. <laughs> yeah. It was right there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but but I mean, I think that uh, uh, it, it's something that it can be enjoyed uh, with a PG thirteen. You can say <laughs> not for kids for real. Uh, but but I definitely suggest to everybody, and it's a fun movie to watch more than one time. I think I really liked it, and I did enjoy it just the same today it just came me like we were laughing like hey bro today just watching it again <laughs> it just gets you cracking up all the time <laughs> you know what they miss in the movie and i'm gonna complain about this they didn't put the guy that says but wait there's more <laughs> <laughs> did they really need to everywhere you looked there was more <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Costco was bigger than some countries. So, <laughs> oh my God, bro! You know what it reminds me, Costco? It reminds me those Amazon's complex. You know, it, my my wife remind told me that it remind that Costco in this movie remind her of uh, a, the, there's a certain IKEA that we went in Orlando. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll be there. <laughs> you get tired and lost walking in there, man. <laughs> there are times where you actually think, okay, I'm going to just walk backwards back to the entry because it's closer than going around and there's no meat point to cross it. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've been there, man. I went there all the time. <laughs> I, I have a mental map of all the shortcuts in Ikea, so... <laughs> Now, I think that, that we should leave Robert with the final thoughts so Ray can take it away with, I don't know what yeah. kind of science you got out of this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a few we'll things to discuss that will be interesting, uh, but we leave, we'll leave that until after final thoughts. But, um, yeah, look, humor can entertain and it can also warn people um, where if you just let things go and let them continue to their – somewhat obvious but ridiculous conclusions you get a movie like this and um i'm sure that when this movie came out there was a few advertising executives backroom people who were watching this going god damn it they must have seen our plans they must have worked out what we were planning to do and let it slip got early the algorithmic yeah i mean um <laughs> I, as I said earlier, I'm sure that the big companies advertising people would just love us to all lose half our IQ and just become morons who buy whatever is pushed in front of us and it would save them a lot of time and effort convincing people to buy things that they don't really need and is not good for them. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is a really cautionary tale um, in the guise of a really funny comedy it pulls no punches. It can be quite um, in your face and will offend some of the PC crowd of uh, 2023. Uh, but if, you, if you're if you not amongst those people who, you know, get offended by somebody sneezing, then um, watch uh, have, a, have a watch of this movie because it will, it will entertain, but it will also make you think a little harder about some of your choices that you're making with um, your purchases and your body and, um, you know, it might convince you to read a book or take a course or do something to keep those IQ points from disappearing because once we lose them, uh, we could end up like this. So just keep that in mind, boys and girls. Awesome. So for my final thoughts, um, I want to say this movie is a perfect example of what I wrote on my article um, on our si our website, sciencefictionremedy.com. Uh, the article is called The Impact of Science Fiction as a Thought Experiment on Humanity. Um, this is a perfect example of how we can grab a topic and, and, and we can experiment with a topic and see where it takes us as a human, you know, humanity as a general. Um, it's, it's, it's a real funny movie. Um, however, just note the time that it was made. This was uh, it released in 2006. So um, some of the, um, the topics, the language uh, might be um, dated in a point that it might offend some people. So just have that in mind that this movie was made back then, and that was not the intention of the movie. Um, the, the, the intention of the movie, for the most part, is to be funny. But it was a thought experiment in what humanity could turn to be if things go the way they are. Um, I am very curious, very, very curious, to hear your thoughts on this as well. Having knowledge of where society is at now. And, and there's two camps of people here that I want to hear from. If you are A, like me and Ray, uh, and, and Ray, where we watched this early on and see this and thought, okay, you know, this is a possibility. It's a little scary. I see how we can go there. And then fast forward realizing that most of the stuff in this movie has kind of turned true. Loki. <laughs> and, and the other camp, B, 
the people that have seen it recently on the current affairs of society and see how this movie kind of predicted some of the things that we see today. So overall, it's a real funny movie. And you could watch it not having to think about the things. It's one of those movies that you could do whatever you feel with. Um, and of course, you can watch it and, and, and think deeply about all the, the topics that have been presented to you. You can throw a robot and overthink it. Exactly. You can do it. <laughs> so it was a very enjoyable, very hilarious movie with the information, if you want to take it, um, of, you know, things that you can think deeply, you can take, you can mull over, and you can really dissect after the movie's over. So remember, I do want to hear from you guys. So you can reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, you can actually join our Discord um, if you like, and we can talk uh, on our Discord channel as well. Um, you can also call our hotline. Uh, the number is uh, 1-305-563-6334. But I'm very, very curious to hear your thoughts on, on, on this particular movie. So I enjoy it. I think everybody should watch it. And even if you're offended by it, just know that this is not a movie that was made knowing the things we know today. And that is the whole point of the movie. So that is my, my last thoughts. Cool. Should we go to the final uh, segment? Final segment. The final thoughts? Yeah, go on. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I know that Robert's got a, a bunch of uh, conversation starters here, but uh, I'll just I'll just lead in with my one. So um, just wondering, uh, now I know that um, uh, Robert now knows of this person because I filled him in during the pre-show. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, Geo, have you ever heard of a fellow named Thomas Midgley Jr.? No. Well, he happens to be one of the 10 most hated scientists in the world. Do you know why? No, I'm looking him up. <laughs> Google is your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was not aware of this, um, and it surprises me. That I they took aware. they took a fine middle school and wanted to change it. Uh, say Midgel Jones or uh, Thomas Midley Jr. Thomas Midley Jr. 19, 1889, November 1944, American mechanical engineer. He played a major role in developing leaded gasoline. Mm -hmm. So he was he was um, one of the main proponents. And he developed uh, tetraethyl lead for gasoline, claiming that it was safe. And um, hmm. <laughs> uh, he 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 tried a few other chemicals. One that was really really stinky, but did a good oh. job. And like people wouldn't put up with the smell. And then he came up with tetraethyl lead, um, claiming that uh, the lead wasn't hazardous. Uh, but uh, it is believed that exposure to car exhaust from leaded gas during childhood took a collective 824 million IQ points away from more than 170 million U.S. adults alive today, a study has found, according to Medical News Today. And that's oh, U.S. That, only. That's yes. That's just wow. the U.S. So, you know, I, I thought I'd bring up Midgley. Um, oh, you should also know that he was the first person to create a CFC, which, you know, was destroying the ozone layer until they were banned. So this guy got some really bad marks against his name. Could we uh, call him the mad scientist? Well, he's one of the 10 most hated scientists in history. So he's the uh, reason why our ozone layer was suffering. Uh, well, it's not, it's not, it hasn't finished repairing itself yet. It's still got some ways to go. But um, yeah, he created the first CFC, Freon. Uh, and um, he also came up with the idea of putting tetraethyl lead into gasoline and claimed that it was safe. And of course, it's well known now that no level of lead is safe and uh, causes um, uh, problems with uh, uh, brain development and loss of IQ. Uh, so you can, you can see that um, the idea of, 
you know, the general IQ in um, a population declining due to a lack of selective pressures for uh, high IQ uh, is not only possible, but it has already happened um, due to, uh, you know, uh, a, a choice by fuel manufacturers, um, which, you know, gasoline is something that it, pretty much everybody uses in some form or another. And it was used for a long time with lead in it, and that lead is now in the environment, and it's in all of us here. And um, everybody on this panel and probably just about everybody listening would have been smarter without it. Just think about that, Gio. We could have been smarter. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. We could have been smarter. He, he would have just rather just like money. Just, and that's just kicks. theory right now. We don't know. Well, it, 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 is, um, it, it is thought to be the case that everybody has suffered from. Do you think that that could be inherited? Because that's the thing. We were not alive when that happened. So no, no, no. That... Yeah, you smell gasoline with lead before. Yeah, but I mean, I know drug addicts are actually like, I know that there's some drug addicts actually like sniff that stuff. No, no. I'm talking about just pouring gas in your car. That's it. Yeah. I don't that's, think, I don't think, bro. That's, it. that's think. all it takes. But you see, all that lead that was blown out of the exhaust pipes is in exactly. the environment now. It's not going away. It doesn't because. break down. It is there. So it's in the fish that you eat. It's in the, the crops yeah. that you eat. It's going into your body all the time and it collects. It yeah. doesn't go away. So um, these these uh, heavy metals collect in the food chain and you end up eating. Is there a way for me to measure that on my bloodstream or on my... There probably is. I, I haven't Googled it, but there, there, there probably is a way to measure it. That would be interesting yeah. to actually have a look at. That would be very, very interesting. Hmm. Could be could be something worth doing. Depends on how many thousands of dollars it's going to cost you because you live in the US. But Damn. Yeah. That's shitty. Yeah. There, there are documentaries that I've seen um, that you can actually look for. Uh, I'll try to find some so I can send it your way. But I'm sure that if you Google it, you'll find a couple. Yeah, no, it will be interesting. Hopefully, there will be an easy way to test that out on oneself to see the, the practical effect of that on the human body. Because, I mean, I wouldn't think that. But when you think about it, I mean, going in the highway, even smoking a cigarette, you're inhaling a hundred uh, poisonous uh, elements into your body. A few of them are tartar, carbon monoxide. Yeah, you but know. I don't think cigarettes is part of this. This is just mainly, no. This is ethanol, though. Yeah, what comes ethanol, out of cars? Right? What comes out of cars? Pipes. That's basically yeah. it. I mean, they 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 stopped putting tetraethyl lead in. Like Japan was the first country to ban it in the mid '90s, and by the early 2000s, there was only a few countries who were still allowing lead in cars. And apparently, Libya was the last country to ban tetraethyl lead as an additive to fuel and that was in 2021 well it figures uh, actually it makes sense right that you said that because if i'm not mistaken i don't know what the community saw that but you know that in rome ancient roman empire uh the cups that the romans would use were made out of lead yeah hence why they were also crazy and they would do stupid things and things that didn't seem rational mm-hmm but it's because, I mean, they were drinking out of a lead container and that was literally detrimented their brain process <laughs> incrementally and absurdly aggressively. So they would be completely insane by the age of 30 something or 40. And they, they didn't behave really according to like uh, a, a way that we would consider, uh, consider even a normal standard today you will say like he's crazy like that's abnormal that's crazy that's insane no i mean they're drinking from lead cups yeah so mm -hmm. it's just a direct poisoning that they're committing or normally mm. makes sense actually do you say that yeah i mean lead lead is bad news it really is bad news and we had it had it um, pumped into us through car exhaust for many years which was quite a mm -hmm. shame and it reduced uh, it reduced overall iq levels so we've already you know, seen a, a depression of IQ levels. I had to point out that's actually a very scary thing because 
Um, I can, I have a point of, of comparison, right? And I'm going to put in uh, Dominican Republic, for example, Santo Domingo, uh, because Gio is here. So to get his his point of view in here, um, I, I basically grew up here, so I'm used to the level of smog in the cities. Um, it's it's there, it's present, but it's not something that I notice because the smell is not bad. Maybe because I got used to it. I don't know what it is, right? Yeah. It's not- but the few times that I have gone uh, for vacation to Santo Domingo, it shocks me that as soon as I get out, I smell the smug. Yeah. And it's something shocking. Is that you know why? Normal? Gio, it, it, is it just my in- impression of that? No. Or is that something that you it, noticed too? It is. It is. It is that. And the problem is you have here DOT regulations that force you to maintain your car you know like if you have a vehicle that is constantly throwing black fogs of smoke in the street you're gonna get pulled over and you're gonna get fined for it and eventually you get out of this they'll get you out of the street and, and mm-hmm. force you not to drive that vehicle over there you don't have such regulations so you can have a car running on oil all oil, oil, oil and whenever you're running low on oil you just pour more oil on the oil, oil on the oil, oil. so yeah. you're not you're not fixing that so you have buses you have trucks old cars that are i mean you have cars over there that have like freaking like sh- uh, little locks in, in, in the doors because they are that broken and oh. art imitating life or life imitating art yeah to be or not to be uh, well, but, but is- it's a normal it's a normal thing and, and and yes yes it is worse over there and at the same time, I don't know if you ever gone like to like a rural area or like to the countryside, oh, and yes. you can notice the incredible difference yes. on the purity of the air locally, mm-hmm. just by being outside of a big city. I can tell you when I went to Brazil, when I went to Brazil, I went to the to the what we call the interior, the the countryside, to visit uh, some political family over there. And when we when I came back to Sao Paulo, which is one of the biggest capital cities in in the country, like from the outskirts of the city, you could see a giant fog of clouds oh, yeah. coming out of the ground up to the skies of just the pollution that you could see from outside the city that was just embracing the whole city. It's incredible. It's, it's just like, I, I mean, it's something like surreal. For you to just be going into a city and seeing like it looks cloudy and foggy and it's not cloudy and foggy, it's pollution. Yeah. Yeah, you it's, you see that in Sydney as well. I, I used to live in the northern part of Sydney and you'd look down into the into the bowl part of Sydney where the, the Sydney Harbour Bridge and everything is, and you could see the, the smog from the morning yes. commute. And what would happen is that would blow out over the ocean, turn into petrochemical fog, and it would blow back in in the afternoon. And end up up against the mountains, uh, up in the the Penrith um, Emu Plains area, and so many kids up that way have lung problems, and mm-hmm. they have asthma. Like there's a huge spike in asthma because yeah. of that that pollution. But what can you do about it? I mean, it's the air you've got to breathe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. people aren't going to stop and, driving the cars. And on top of that, and on top of that, besides our lungs are not made to process that. Trees are not made to process that toxic chemical. That's not carbon monoxide anymore. That's carbon monoxide with tetrochemical uh, uh, waste in the air, really. And, and I mean, a tree doesn't. A tree cannot process that, and we don't. That's that's the problem. We were spoken before about how we go throughout Mother Earth, destroying and not replacing and not creating a solution for the problems that we're creating along the way too. You know. I mean, it would be interesting if somebody would put the time and effort on creating some technology of air filters that are just like standing towers that are made to specifically tackle those chemicals in the air that are not going to resolve it, but it's going to alleviate or at least caution a little bit the heavy effect that is not being stopped at any way or, or slowed down, you know? Yeah, the reason why I brought that, that up is it, it makes me think how there are communities within every country 
because this is this is mm -hmm. in every country, right? I just yeah. I just brought up Santo Domingo as an example because it, it just it was fresh in my mind. Big metropolis over here, Robert, in the United States. In New York, exactly. when I went to New York the first time, I saw the same thing too. Pollution exactly. from outside the city. So so it makes you think that that communities outside this, like maybe in the outskirts or in the country, um with by that definition, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ray, but by that definition, they would have the potential to have smarter kids than kids in, you know, concentrated areas like, you know, say Los Angeles or New York. Mm -hmm. Well, if everybody started out with 100 IQ, I'd agree with you, but there's natural variation within genetics. So you can say that, you know, there'll still be smarter kids and dumber kids, mm -hmm. but more less smart kids if you want to be PC about it. But this whole movie's not PC, so I don't know if I should bother. Dumber kids. <laughs> but but basically, um, it's an overall dulling of intelligence. So for the really smart kids, they get a little less smart, but they're still way smarter than than 100 IQ. But it really affects the ones who are already struggling. Because like, mommy, am I dumb? No, honey, you're less smart. That's all. You, if you take away, <laughs> if you take away the same amount from a lower number, it's a much bigger percentage than if you take it away from a higher number. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you know what's a bigger stigma that we don't realize too? That uh, this is social stigma that people from the countryside tend to be labeled like less smart just yeah. because of the culture, and that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> They're actually far more capable because they know a lot of basic skills that are more important for the day-to-day -day living that people in the city actually yeah and, and, yeah, and, I, and I think I think that is just a, a social myth created to support that big scheme of an economy you know because that supports the big city to keep on bringing all this pollution and supporting all this economy based on uh, fuels that are a finite resource that is making irreparable damage to our uh our earth in a whole um just before we completely move on from thomas mitchley um i got some bad news for you robert <laughs> the major can the major contributor of uh tetraethyl lead uh into the atmosphere in the u.s today is piston driven aircraft because they still use leaded fuel Do you fly a piston-driven aircraft? Uh, 100, um, uh, the 100 aviation fuel on a Cessna yeah. uh, 170. Yeah. 172. Yeah. It's, it's lighted. Uh, um, I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I drive an electric car, so. No, mm. that's... The point, the point of, uh, of letting fuel was to reduce knocking. Uh, if uh, people don't know what that is, it's um, it, it's uh, the idea of a piston-driven engine is that you get fuel and air into the piston. Mm -hmm. It gets compressed as the piston comes up because they're all connected together. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to a certain point, the spark plugs mm -hmm. are meant to light the fuel and then that expands and pushes the piston back down. So you get that movement, that movement that everyone knows about piston engines um, that, that continues the cranks moving and, and gives you the, the forward momentum or the turning of the propeller in the case of a plane. But um, what happens in um, uh, fuels that aren't a high enough octane, which means that they can't undergo uh, a lot of compression without auto-igniting, is that they ignite early, and that's what's called knocking. And the tetraethyl lead was there to smooth out the fuel and stop the knocking from being caused. Now, other fuels like diesel, they um, don't compress very well at all. And they don't, diesel engines don't actually have spark plugs. They rely on auto ignition from compression to actually ignite the diesel, which I found interesting. I didn't know that until I looked into this. So that's the difference between a diesel engine and a, um, and a normal. Uh, gasoline slash petrol engine figures that diesel is cheaper yes diesel is cheaper and rougher because um it's it, less it's less refined this is refined well you know about octane rating so the higher the octane rating the more com compression 
the fuel can undergo without auto igniting. And um, basically what tetraethyl lead did was it increased the octane rating. So um, uh, basically for high performance vehicles, you need a very compressible fuel because the, um, the amount of compression that it needs to undergo to get that real power for a high performance engine is quite significant. Uh, for, for a normal engine, it's not as bad, but for a high performance engine like plane engines, um, they, they need to be able to undergo huge amounts of compression uh, compared to something like diesel. So um, the higher performance the engine, the, the higher octane, the fuel it requires, so you don't get knocking and damage to the engine. Yeah, and that is, a, and I, I can actually speak to that. That is the major issue when it comes to aviation or general aviation. Um, like in 2022, I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, the Santa Clara County, County banned the sale of leaded ad gas at the uh, county airports. Um, and that created a backlash because that, not because, and many people, and this is a thing that, that kind of gets me slightly mad uh, on the news, where people think, oh yeah, you know, they're just trying to push their agenda, right? Because we're trying to clear, because I understand, right? Lead is bad for you. I understand perfectly, right? But if you if you think about it, we're we're not talking about lead. We're talking about the technology is not there enough to make flying safer when anything less than a hundred, which is the abgas, the octane lead. The, um, so if, if you're not selling that that abgas, the one hundred LL, like we call it. Um, you're you're introducing a safety risk on flying, and and uh, Gio, I think you understand with this. If yeah. I put it in this way, if you sit down on a on a if you go on a Cessna to 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 fly, and they tell you you know we can't give you LL you know we can give you a hundred because it's banned, uh, would you fly that airplane? No, I, I agree. I agree with you. I mean. It's 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 a paradoxical issue because at the end of the day, we already have this supply chain demand necessity. You know, we need to fly. I mean, if we stop flying out of nowhere, we don't have an alternative for it. We're literally gonna cripple ourselves economically at a worldwide level. You're gonna have well, the purge. Well, just look gonna, at look at 2020. That's basically what happened. Yeah, you're gonna have mm -hmm. the purge going on. I mean, you had a lot of raids going on streets where usually family-owned business were being ravaged on the streets, you know? And, and it happened already. It's just going to be worse. And you don't want that happening either. The, the, hence what I always say, we have to work on solutions. And, and I have a mentality too, like, if you're not part of the solution, don't don't come and complain, you know? And let, I, I get Robert's uh, feeling that he, like, they want to just... <laughs> cut the legs down but they don't want to give you even prosthesis you know it's like oh no take it off and no there's no solution or alternative for it give like, an alternative the before you take it out give it an alternative yeah. but don't, yeah, don't introduce risk into flying yeah well, it's, it's like what it's to us and like what are you trying to do kill everybody that gets on an airplane exactly. get an engine failure and just whoop no <laughs> come on <laughs> that's just it's a it's like come i feel guys Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like in this time and day, common sense is a treasure. It doesn't really cease to be normal. Thing and it's called common sense. <laughs> As we say down here, common sense isn't. It's a common. It's a common, bro. And that's that's bizarre. That's bizarre to say. Uh, th thank so you. I, I, I thought I thought I went right there. Thank you, Ray, uh, for giving me a way to vent about AppGas. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I always see uh, you. But, but but honestly, I I I think I'm not sure if that even it's an alternative. Uh, like, do you know if if it's viable or even possible to consider natural gas as a as a f alternative fuel for for aircrafts? No, because I think it's used for vessels for like ocean vessels. The octane. Yeah, you need the, the the engines on the aircrafts are very very different um, than 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 a car, and it requires a lot more. Like you have to be um, taking care of it. Like I don't know if you if you're aware, like when you fly, uh, let's let's 
let's give you a sample, a, a real, um, you know. Hey, I landed an airplane once, man. Uh, let's give you a, it's an easy plane to fly. For example, let's talk about the Cessna 150. It's a two seater, mm -hmm. right? Um, you don't have a, a you have a regular prop. So basically, you have two knobs. You have the um, the, the throttle right one and the left one. The throttle is basically it has the 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 black knob, and yeah. that controls the amount of gas you give uh, the engine, right? And then you have um, the red knob, um, which it 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 gives you it, it's it, it, the way that I can explain it better is it's a it's a percentage, right? So to give you an idea, if you put it halfway through, um, it's 50% gas, 50% 50, 50 air. And if you move it down, um, which is usually when when you start, the, when you're getting down and you're sitting down on an airplane, that's basically where it's at. Mm -hmm. That's all air, don't no gas. So basically, obviously, the engine will not start. So um, when I, and, and I'm trying to explain this, I'm trying to make it short because I don't want to give you an aviation. The more air, yeah. the more air the gas has, the more explosion it creates. Well, so it here's, has to start, reach here, a certain minimum level. Here, let me try to explain because you're trying to go somewhere and I'm trying to go somewhere else. So when okay, I am ready it. to take off, when I'm ready to take off, I am in the runway. I am lined up and I'm I'm ready to start. Uh, I make sure that my red knob is all the way to the front, which is 100% gas, right? And the 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 black knob is all the way up, so it's full power, right? So I'm like going there. I'm looking at my airspeed. The airspeed hits sixty, and and I and I pull back, and I rotate, and I I I take off, right? So when I am climbing up, the higher that I go, the less that I would require. So basically, let's say, for example, I go past 3,000, there's a possibility that I pull back on the red knob to give the to give more air to the engine. That's because there's less oxygen at higher altitude. Exactly. So what happens if your engine gets heated, right? You're basically leaning the engine by pulling back, right? So if the engine is heated, like I look at my, my temperature gauge, you could either pull that knob all the way up to give it more gas to help it cool. So it's not as lean as it is before. So that's actually, you kind of play with those knobs as you fly because you're looking at your gauges and you're looking at the stuff. So I don't even know where I was going with this, but basically it's, it's um, you always have to keep an, 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 an eye on, on your engine. Your engine is not like on a car. When you step on a, an accelerator and you go, no. When you're flying, you can control. You have to control like the speed, like the the throttle, how much because you, you have a specific speed that you gotta go. But you also gotta look at the uh, um, uh, at your range of you know. Yeah. Um, if, are you gonna lean the engine or or oh crap is 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 getting a little it's getting a little hot. I I, I should you know. Re, um, run it rich, right? And put yeah. it all the way up. So I keep on, you know, looking at all that. This is something that you don't you do not do on cars. You got to adjust the mix. Makes total it, it, sense it, what you're saying because uh, in a car, it kind of works by itself. It does itself out. But in the airplane, you have to monitor that function. So you, like your engine is your lifeline, you know? And it goes, it, it, you're manually monitoring that and controlling it. So it's not like your your airplane or aircraft would know, at least not in a small airplane, it would know, oh, it's overheating and it will regulate itself. You actually have to do the regulation yourself manually. So you control that air intake inflow into your engine that is going to control also the strength or the force of that combustion that is going to give the engine at the end the power. So now let me transfer you to Santa, Cl uh, Santa Clara. I thought it was Santa Claus. <laughs> hey, hey! I know what they should um, replace the um, the leaded uh, have guess with. Yeah. What? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Run, no, the first mutilator because it has no joints. No, oh, you, you yeah. need to go. You need to go to our IG and put this story so you can show them Brando the right way. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brando. It's the, same, it's the same sort of color. It works for it's everything. Yeah. You got electrolytes. It was a dick cycle. <laughs> oh my god. I just thought we were getting a bit heavy, so I should throw some humor in there. So yeah, you were yeah. gonna take us back to Santa Claus. Uh, Santa Clara. No, I'm just saying, uh, you know, it's it's basically that, you know, it, you have to do all that, and now you get anything less than 100, and you introduce knocking into the engine. Yeah, bad idea. Yeah, it's it's a safety hazard for sure. We agree on that. Okay, so we went into an aviation lesson somehow. <laughs> <laughs> nice, bro. I thought I thought it was just an off offhand comment that you'd go like, yeah, I know. But no, it turned into a 25 minute talk about aviation. Right? So should have realized that would happen. I really should have. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Robert, do you want to cover any of these other points that you had here? Uh, I just basically just added it up just in case um, any of you guys want to talk about it. Um, we kind of, I think we talked. Um, I guess I can go over, like, for example, language. Uh, that would be something that we see today. Um, anyone that has kids, especially teenagers, know this. Um, language is constantly changing. Um, yes. I had Totes. a specific... Huh? Totes. 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 I'm lost now. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Totes means totally. Oh, oh God. Yeah, you know Coach that. changing. That, that's <laughs> rad, man. I mean, the language that I used when I was in Slang. high school, um, yeah. it was something that my parents could not understand. And and for, fast forward to my kids when they were teenagers, they would not understand that language, and I did not understand their language. Yeah. So we're in a constant state of change when it comes to Imagine language. Imagine five hundred years. Talk. It's touch cray cray. <laughs> Imagine 500 years, bro. Exactly. Yeah, so this, that that is something that, that people don't really realize that, that, that this is happening. Um, and and one of the things that is missing from time travel uh, movies is that you know it's very simple how Language they put it. Right? You go back in time and you can start talking to people. Yeah. Now, I don't think that's what's going to happen. No. Uh, no, that's true. That's a be, good observation, man. You know, so. That, that, that's one thing. It, in this movie, is very refreshing how we see it the other way around. How we have, you know, typically someone going back. This is someone going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. Using the, 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 the language of this person that is considered ancient, not for the new, the new people. But it, this, I think this is where this movie gets it right, slightly, in, in the fact that the, the, the language is so different that he is being treated differently for the way he speaks. Yeah. Um that that's one thing that I wanted to I, I wanted to bring out um the decline of intelligence we talked about um it, which is a very real um scenario issue. Yeah. Um consumerism it, it's it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to know that um, this is something that could, you know, we see it increasingly. And it's not difficult to think that this could be a reality, uh, what we can see when it comes to, you know, commercials and, and, and you know, how people consume products and how it's being advertised. It's not rocket surgery. <laughs> Brought to you by Carl Jr. So yeah, I just <laughs> those are points that I wanted to bring out that this this I think this movie touched um, perfectly. Um, that when it comes to you know going forward in society and that, that many um, because this is kind of like a time travel movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You have you guys have to subscribe. <laughs> if you're not if you're not watching this on YouTube. <laughs> I apologize. We get to the end of the show and I start having fun with the ticker. I'm gonna I'm gonna post I'm gonna post I'm gonna post uh uh 
a hash, uh, the hashtag today today on Twitter. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, uh, anything else you guys might want to in the science? I think we kind of covered everything. Uh, yeah, I think that we kind of covered it just on, a, on, on an addition to what you said about the language, which I think is very interesting. And I actually have deep interest on it. Uh, it. It really happens on a local level in each nation, if you think about it, Robert. Like, depending on the region in the United States that you are, people speak differently. They use local words that are not known nationally already. And then their accent is different. Like you can tell where somebody's from just by how they speak. And then that happens on a country level and then just subs divide itself in each yeah. country. So imagine with like the world populace could go, how that can exponentially just diversify even more and make it more complex for us to communicate. So that's that was very interesting, actually, that you brought, out, brought that up. Didn't think of that, that hardly, even though they actually pointed out right at the beginning when he woke up. That was very interesting. Yeah, it's it's something that many sci-fi, you know, sci-fi time travel movies don't don't really yeah touch at all. They don't. They they kind of oversimplify. Actually, they don't give that importance to linguistics, which is a very important science. Because I mean, it's the prevention of total warfare. If you think about it. When you don't have a way of communicating, what's the next best thing that you do as any species universally? It's warfare. Because that's the way that you control threat, and then you try to communicate if you don't have to annihilate it. Annihilate it, you know? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So this actually concludes Great show, our... guys. Concludes our uh, episode. Yeah, we it, have it to is... finish up. We're at two fifty-five now. We're nearly going to crack three hours. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, and I want to give a special thank you to our viewers for joining us tonight, and welcome. I am I am Robert. Brought to you <laughs> by Car Jenner. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being uh, with us. Uh, one more episode. Um, we, I, I don't get tired enough of saying thank you. Um, really, really mean it. Um, we are the podcast that we are today because of you. Um, we really appreciate you being with us every week um, and, and, and engaging us in conversation about the topics. Um, it, 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 make, it humbles us. It makes us happy that, to know that we are not in love uh, not alone in this love of sci-fi and uh, everybody else shares our love. So uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us one more week. And we can't wait to have you for our next episode. Thank you so much.